DC TV Sports present the PIJHL on Delta Cable Television. Tonight's game, the Delta Ice Hawks and the visiting North Delta Flyers. Hi, everybody, and welcome to game number two of a best of seven series in the PIJHL semifinal round. I'm Steve Erickson, joined by my daughter, Annette Labas. Our pleasure to bring this telecast to you. Annette, where you should have an exceptional game tonight, considering the Flyers won the first game in the other barn of the opposition. That's right. It'll be a heated contest tonight, and I'm curious to see how it all uh, plans out. Okay, well, we're going to turn our attention right now to ice level because they're ready to drop the puck and get the game underway. So we'll turn our attention to ice level, get the big spotlight off, and get them going. All right, with the attention at the game right now, we do have a couple of adjustments underway. The one player for the North Delta Flyers that is not playing is Kit Matkaluk, wearing number 88. He's the only player that is not playing for them. From the opening faceoff, the Delta Ice Hawks dumped the puck inside the zone. Fortuna got hammered at the blue line, knocked off the puck. It's a fast pace right now at an early start in the first period. Behind the net, taking it, McNeely. Trying to work his way out of the right side. Stopped, intercepted by Fousey. Fousey dumps it in the corner. Shot on goal. Misplayed that. Orban goes after that in the corner. Tries to get it to dump it out. Turning, setting things up. McNeely going back behind his own net. Just off the sideboards. Up to Redmond. Redmond tried to clear it out. Dumped back inside. Fortuna couldn't pick that one up and get the shot out. Chung bangs it off the boards. Long shot from the point. Right on goaltender Brandon Hart. A little bit of a change tonight. We've got two goaltenders playing in that. We should make mention. Sort of second string, no slight meant to eat a young goaltender. We've got Brad Thiessen playing for the Delta Ice Hawks in place of their normal starter, Jason McClenahan. And Jason is an awesome goaltender. And Matt Boudreaux is normally the number one starter for the North Delta Flyers. They've started tonight, Brandon Hart. That's interesting that both teams have started their second string goaltender. That's not normal for playoffs. No, it most certainly is not. I guess they figure the boys are going to be overworked and maybe underpaid, so they'll get them. <laughs> Give them a little bit of rest early in the contest. Had that hurry up faceoff take place inside the zone. The Flyers lost the faceoff, trying to dump it back out. RJ Horn cleared it, not out, kept in the point, dumping it behind their own net is Kyle Ross. Ross tried to go after it, dumped, not out of the zone, kept in by Stephen Gillis on the right side. Gillis gets control again, shot it back in, bumped all the way out. Richard Mollard takes it back off the puck. Solid hit in front of the penalty box. Throwing on that player right there. Picked up, we've got a player number three. We should find out who he is for the Delta Ice Hawks. They've changed their roster on us, and we do not know who he is. Our apologies. We'll get to it. Inside the zone, good solid body check right there by Tyler Eckford. Straight going down. Shot off the post! Oh, right now in wild. Morishita. Shot that high off the post. Solid job for good old U.S. Steel. Nordy for the Flyers. Flyers take Nordy off the puck, taking it behind the net, back up, Nordy, stop! Oh, Hart made a golden opportunity. Exceptional stop by Harden, they're being tested early in it. He is, he's playing fantastic, he's ready for this. Richmond took the shot on goal, blocked, kept back in at the point. By Hansen, right to the goaltender, we have a stoppage of play, a couple of players come together, the linesmen quickly move in. We should make mention right now that the officials for the game, referee is Chris Hahn. Linesman, Mr. Tick, Tim Digme from North Delta, and Phil Roberts from Aldergrove. Yeah, they're doing a great job. I think they're going to have their hands full tonight at the pace of this game. That referee is going to be exhausted by they, the end. They are. I see these supervisors for the officials come in. Randy Parnell come in. He's one of the supervisors. Troy goes up the dark in the front of the penalty box area. Shot it out and down the ice inside. Icing cop. Face off back inside. Ice Hawks end zone and a long dump by Toigo. He thought that the wingers were going to pick that one up. Not you know, a bad crowd on hand, and that a little bit sparse right now, but they're coming in. They said there was a pretty good crowd the other night, too. Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's filling up more and more. I think people are looking for a nice warm coffee. It's a little cold in here. But, uh, you know, I was just going to say, right now you're looking at Tim Keller from the North Delta Flyers, and their goalie, Brendan Hart, Brandon Hart, is just playing fantastic. He's certainly up for the challenge of this game. As he ever. Orban took the shot from the point right on net, but it was blocked in front. Dumped once again across the blue line by Tyler Erickson. No relation. We have to tell everybody that because I get asked that by a <laughs> dozen people every week long. Dumped back out all the way out inside by Houston. Carl Houston back at center for the Ice Hawks. 
Long the board. Solid bit of a hit there by Fuzzy. Fuzzy lost his balance, fell down at the best of time, shot all the way out. Erickson tried to pick that one up. Goes inside, stutter step. Fuzzy in control. Erickson going for the doorstep. Shot, but stopped there by Hart. Going after the rebound. He made it. How did he reach that one? Holy smokes, I have. He has NHL written all over him. Oh. He is just playing outstanding. Well, we said you were going to be entertained. If you're not entertained, this. Rewind the tape and set it up again. Because and there this you guy's are. Play awesome. You're looking at Brandon Hart, and we've talked and talked about how he saw it for this game. Let's have a look at the replay. He's set. He's got his angle down. Defenseman goes down. He makes the first save, and look at that for the rebound. He gets his glove hand out. And all credit going to the Hawks. They are just all over these guys right now. They're starting and really taking it to him right now. Shop kept in at the point. Off the far backboards, picked up. Redmond dumped it out in the neutral ice area. Shot back in, solid body check, and Ross Sherrod got dumped. Penalty coming up, indicated by the referee, Chris Hahn. Elbowing minor oh. penalty, Annette. Yeah, and you know what? He's not happy about it. It happens to be our mystery player number three, and he's certainly not happy about going to the penalty box. Oh, well. But good call by Hahn. It was a bit high on the elbow. We're just going to see if we can get a review of it. Here we go, right up in front of the penalty box. He made no effort to play the puck at all and got his elbow up into the throat area of the other player. So there we can see our, our offending player. Everybody's got their opinion right now. First power <laughs> play attempt for the Flyers. See if they're going to capitalize on this one from the draw. Over on the far side, giving it straight over. Inside, kept inside by Tyler Chung. Dumps it in the corner, taking out the backboards. Fighting for it is Jesse Birch. Birch played earlier on in the year for the Coquitlam Express in the BC Hockey League. Birch comes up with it, tries a centering pass. Ring his bell and knock him off the puck. Good play. Good shot. Eckford steered that towards the net, but it was stopped by Chung. Chung deflected it in front after he got the initial shot away. Good play. Yeah, it was a good play. They're, they're really working hard in the corners, double teaming the, the Hawks and making sure that they can try and get the puck and take advantage of this power play because right now, watching this game up to this point, you definitely say that the Hawks were outplaying the Flyers. Oh, clearly, no question right now. They're not uh, keeping... They're not keeping shots on goal. This is not one of the clocks where they can set them up like the one in Sun God. Here's I'm the trying. announcement. Here's the announcement. Two minutes for an Dolter, the Flyers are on the attack, going in, trying to capitalize on the short side. Birch couldn't put that one in. Back pass, kept in by Eckford on the far side. Eckford goes over, takes his man off the puck. Birch comes back to the center ice area, circles, not going to get the puck that way. Cleared the puck on the delayed offside. They reset that back up. Icehawks on the line change. Birch cross ice as he passes that one over to Horn. Horn, drop pass, shot, stop. Oh, going after the rebound. Molnar trying to pick it up, couldn't put it in. Going after it, and Thiessen's diving for it. Who's got it? It's still loose. The puck is loose. Nobody's got it. Scores! The Flyers just kept digging and digging and shot it home at it. Wow, that's incredible. I, I honestly thought that the referee was going to blow the whistle. We had quite the scramble in the crease, but, you know, nobody seems to be contesting it. And uh, all hats off to the uh, Flyers, because that was incredible. Ah, uh, power play opportunity. They're one for one. Watch this, and that explain it. Here you can see the scramble in front. Clearly, the goaltender is pushed right back into the net. You can see his skates back there. He has no idea where the puck is. Obviously, he can't see it. And there he, he, he manages to poke his head up and see where the shot's coming from, but he really didn't stand a chance. He had players all over him. Team captain Richard Molnar from North Delta scores the first goal for the Flyers. They're ahead one game to none in this first round in the Pacific International Junior Hockey League. Here's the announcement. Richard Molnar with the assist to number 21, R.J. Horn. take the early lead and are they ever driving right now the key for this and that is that they're getting strong goaltenders in their own, strong goaltending support in their own zone by heart and if he continues to play well and you got to give it to both goaltenders they're playing strong Absolutely, but uh, I'd say that Hart has definitely got his team a little more into this game by the way he started. I mean, how can you not be uh, pumped up when your goaltender is playing the way he is? Got the hurry-up face-off in process right now. I'm not sure. No, we've got a little bit of a delay. Carl Houston's talking to the referee. Now, with any uh, indication, they should throw the center out. Normally, they throw the center out in a case like that if a player goes over because of that hurry-up face-off rule. But didn't do it, so that's okay. We'll carry right on. 
Wacott across the line, right on net. Hart makes the big stop once again. Doing the smart thing and slowing the game down, trying to make sure that his team keeps control. If he would have thrown it out, there would have been a good chance that one of the the uh, Hawks would have been there to be all over it. So yes. Smart play. Well, from what I was told, it was an interesting contest the other night here. It was 4-1. The Ice Hawks were up after the first period of play. The final score in the contest was 7-6 for the North Delta Flyers. Molnar out of his own zone, straight ahead, all the way up to Sheard. Sheard dumps it inside the corner. Houston going after that on the right side. Dolter behind his own net, sheared straight up. Morishita going after that, trying to pick it up. Dumped it all the way out to center ice area. Houston couldn't pick that one up, and Kyle Ross lobs it back in. Morishita going after it, gets hauled down. Play carries right on. At the boards, off the boards, all the way out to center. Dolter lost it. Inside to Ross to Morishita. Back pass on the far side. Nice shot off the side of the net. Hart made the easy stop on that one. Wrap around and they try to jam it in. Yes, the, finally the referee blows the whistle. Says, hold on, guys. Going to have a stoppage of play. I think we're going to see a lot of this, uh, of really pushing into the net and forcing the goaltender to try and freeze it. Um, the players all seem to be really driving towards the net in hopes of getting that goal on a scramble. Well, they're trying to. And of course, we all know that it paid off in the first round right there because that's how the Flyers scored. Watch the replay. Here you can see. I think that number two there thought it might have snuck in behind Hart, but uh, you can see 19 driving towards yeah, the net. Yeah, Kyle Ross is number nine, number two, and Brandon Morishita is wearing number 19. And the backhand pass that we saw just prior to yes. that play, that was really nice. Danny Fortuna taking the draw. We've got the hurry-up face-off in process right now. The center turfed out for the Flyers. The center is Chung. Chung got thrown out. They replaced it from the draw. Eckford had it along the boards. Back out to Erickson. Erickson took the one shot, misplayed the second one. Couldn't pick that one up. Danny Fortuna picks that one up in the corner. Houston's wide over to the point. And they couldn't get it back to him. Redmond has control. Shot it out. Kept in at the point. Right on net. And Hart makes the easy stop right there. Now we have a delayed penalty and finally a whistle by the referee. Actually, I think the whistle went. The uh, Flyers player hauled down one of the Hawks. And now he's going to go sit in the penalty box for a little while. That's Ben Forehand is wearing number four. Going to get a minor penalty for roughing called by Chris Hahn. And, you know, I mean, I think he's trying to send a message. You stay away from my goaltender and uh, you won't have this happen. It's a common, common message in this. There you can see the scramble in front of the net. <laughs> a little bit of a mugging took place there. <laughs> Type of deal. You don't know whether to call a penalty or throw a flag. You'd call yardage on it in that. That's right. One or the other. Here's the announcement. Ben Forehand. Two minutes for roughing. Time of the penalty at 5.31. Mazur forehand for roughing. In. Mazur dumped the puck inside the zone, but it went off the glass. And now Erickson is saying uh, it should be inside the zone. And the referee is saying, no, it's not. It's got to go outside. Yeah, he's going to go question it. Uh, I didn't see what happened, so I'm not sure. The puck was dumped in. Tyler thought it was um, should have been inside. Concerned look on uh, Shane Cuss's face right now. Of course, Shane doesn't get too concerned all the time. He's a great guy. <laughs> Mazur takes it for the Ice Hawks behind his own net. Misplayed that solid move. Danny Fortuna come across behind the net, all the way up the center. Straight down the middle. Fortuna down the left side. Cuts in. Good move as he gets around Lee Rogers. Rogers finally takes him out in the corner. Back pass. Out to the point. Cross ice. Straight over to Gillis. A shot. Big stop in front. Gillis going after him. Trying to pick the rebound up. Couldn't get a hold of it. Dumped all the way back down in the Ice Hawks end zone. Minute and 20 seconds left in the minor penalty to Ben Forehand for the Delta Flyers. Shot in. One off on a line change is Mark Rinfret. And the Flyers straight up the center to Kyle Ross. Ross dumped it inside the zone. Morishita going after that, trying to pick it up. Ross has it. Ross dumped it all the way back out to Waycott. At the point. Nice plays. He gave it over to Mazer. Hunt takes a shot. Trevor got good wood on that one to finish the shot away. And you can see him coming in right there. Impressive. Because Tyler Waycott came in, skated off his man, and told Brandon, hey, get out of here because we don't want the penalties. Not going to win the game, stand in the penalty box. That's right, absolutely. But uh, I think that the uh, Flyers are having a pretty good penalty kill. They seem to be dumping it. And not only when they're dumping it, they're making sure that they've got one man in to chase them down in their own zone. Take a look from the draw. Back out. Hunt's wide open at the point. In the corner to Ross. Waycott's going on the front of the doorstep. Cross ice pass to Hunt. Far side once again. Hunt gets it back. Hunt and Dolcher playing give and go with the puck back at the point. Inside the corner up to Waycott. Waycott has control. Dumped it out. Kyle Ross has control. Centering pass trying to get it back out to Waycott. Waycott couldn't pick that one up. Hunt takes a long shot from the point. Hit Kyle Ross on the arm. Back out. 
Stock changes mind, dumped it back in the corner. Left side, Ross centering pass through the goal. Most out to Wacott, couldn't pick that one up inside. Tyler Hunt had control. Hunt has it. That's Trevor Hunt, pardon me. Shot and goal, score, in and out! Oh, what a quick goal! Yeah, Power that, play goal! That was a nice shot. I do believe that Hart was screened on that. He'd probably like to have, have that one back, but it uh, was a real nice shot. It came right back out to him. A power play, power play goal. We have, have to expand on that. Point. Here we go. Here's the shot, not deflected, I don't believe, and it went under the goaltender's pad and right back out again. Trevor Hunt, the one that shot the puck from the point. Okay, referee indicates a line change. Over and done. Back at the draw from center ice. Dumped back inside the zone. Lee Rogers goes after that in the right side. Cross garden in front of the net is Tyler Eckford. Eckford doing a good job staying at home base. Wait, gets it back. Lee Rogers stopped, turned just inside his own blue line, and Ryan Norty was guarding strong against him. Here's the announcement. Inside the zone. Molnar had controls. Tries a centering pass. Couldn't get it out front. Birch in the corner fighting for it. Birch comes up with a centering pass. Birch going back after it. Shot. Big stop by Thiessen. And that's dumped all the way out and down the ice. Right on the doorstep. And Brandon Hart makes the big stop. Lobbed out to center ice. Trying to get it straight up to RJ Horn. Horn misplayed. It goes over his stick. Inside their zone. Mazur has it. Cross ice pass. Dolzer straight up. Martin. Martin. Far side as he passed it over to Garrett Hunt. Going in the corner, fighting for it, trying to pick it up. Shot off the glass, misplayed it, and Mazur couldn't get good lumber on that one to get the shot away. Dolzer takes the shot, pushing the corner. Orban takes his man off the puck, centering pass. Couldn't get it back. Forehands out of the penalty box now. Team's back at full strength. Of course, that goal nullified the minor penalty to the Flyers. Power play goal. We've actually had two power play goals in that in the game. Yeah, both, both teams are one for one on the power play. Each team capitalizing on one, and of course they go in. Garrett Hunt goes in to mix it up, tries to mix it up with Ben Forehand, keeps everybody honest. Just for the sake of our viewers at home who haven't didn't get the opportunity to, to see game one, is this a seven-game series? Is this a four-game series? How this is a seven-game series. The first one, both Delta teams. The sad part, and I was talking to Tim and Shane earlier on, the sad part is one of the Delta teams will get eliminated from further expansion, if you want to call it that, in the playoffs, which is tough. Always nice if we could see both of our Delta teams go on, but uh, there's no real losers. They all come to play. They play hard. The kids have a lot of ability. I'm really impressed with the talent level we're seeing out here again tonight, especially the goaltenders. They're playing unbelievable hockey. Oh, yeah, this is great hockey to come out and watch. And if our viewers at home have an opportunity to come out and watch any of this, they really should. Going to have a penalty being called by the referee. I think it's a cross-checking penalty. He was careful because some referees will call this check a check from behind. And this is interesting because it's going to the team in the offending zone. Yes. It's not going to the defensive team. No, Fousey's got it. Watch this. Watch the hit in the corner. Right there. You can see Ostrovsky has the puck in the corner. He's going to come up with it. Here's the hit coming up. There was a check. Was called a check? It, a little bit of a dive maybe? I don't know. <laughs> call it two minutes for cross-checking which was a good call. If it was a check from behind, he gets a game misconduct with it, whether it's a minor or a major penalty, because that's the one thing that the Canadian Hockey Association want to get out of the game is the hit from behind. Straight up the middle, coming down, R.J. Horn across the blue line, back pass, nice drop to Jesse Birch. Birch has it, fighting for it. R.J. Horn going to the corner, couldn't get it in the corner to him. Tyler Chung comes back out of the own attacking zone, picks it up, and Kyle Ross is doing a great job forechecking. A power play for the Ice Ox, for the Flyers, correction. Shot on goal. Two minutes for cross-checking. Time of the penalty at 9.48. That's a Fousey for cross-checking. Fousey gets a cross-checking penalty at 9.48. Let's take a look at the final league standings right now in this, Annette. There you can see that Abbotsford came in first place with 56 points, followed very closely by Ridge Meadows. Uh, Delta, which I believe would be That's the, the Delta Hawks, Ice Hawks, yes. came in at 53, and quite a ways back was the Flyers with 40. But the key for this is you've got seven teams in the league as we win, Annette. Big shot, big stop again by Hart. Hart made an exceptional stop down there. A 
boy, was he ever overworked. And that was good because going in was Macy Turberg. Turberg had his golden opportunity, just couldn't finish it off. Waycock tries to take the puck off his man. Turberg intercepts it straight over to Waycock. Waycock across the line. Going in, shot, low shot, stop. Deflected in the corner by Hart. Second chance, and he's shot on net. Both teams going off. I'm going to have a wholesale line change right now. Get some fresh legs out. And now I the, think, mm -hmm, go ahead. The key for this, sorry, Annette, there you can see Shane Cuss, the head coach for the Delta Icehawks. There you can see their website also, www.deltaicehawks.com. Very informative website. Now, the key for this is when you have seven teams in the league, one of them obviously cannot make it so rather than just have four teams make it they make the top six make it the bottom place team which is a Grandview Steelers remember them they've been around forever yeah, for a long yeah. time yeah. Steelers, yes. the only team that did not make it you're watching DC TV sports with 850 left in the first period of play the score is tied at one game number two of a best of seven series in the PIJHL I was just going to say before that uh, I've got to give a lot of credit to the uh, Hawks. They're taking every opportunity that even when they're dumping the puck into the far zone, they're always dumping it in on the goaltender. They're not making it icing. They're making sure the puck gets down there and actually getting a shot on goal. Well, that can work for their advantage as long as they utilize it. From the draw, McNeely won the draw. Shot all the way out of their zone. Orban couldn't keep it in. Down the ice. Icing was waved off. There's 25 seconds left in the minor penalty to the Ice Hawks. Flyers working the way out of their zone. Nice passing play as Jeff Orban tried to get that straight up to McNeely. Couldn't get a hold of it. Orban going back inside the zone to pick that one up. Morishita has control of it. Morishita stops, turns. Erickson back out at center ice. Morishita keeps control of it. Stops Tyler. Kyle Ross forechecking right now. Goes behind the net. Couldn't pick that one up. Team's back at full strength. Fuji's minor penalty is expired from cross-checking. Ross tried to take his man off the puck. Failed to do so. Still in control is Pat Redman for the Flyers. Takes the shot off the blocker. Ross dumps that around the far side boards. Turbert dumped it. Not out. Intercepted. Erickson shot it all the way out, but that was kept inside by a hand. I thought it was knocked out of the zone, but the linesman said no. Good call. Phil Roger, Phil Roberts, pardon me, is on the blue line. He was the one that made the call, not me. Good call by the young guy. <laughs> shot. Kept in at the point by Hansen. Right on goal. Bounces up in the air. Going, taking it behind the net is Molnar. Molnar centering pass out of Drovsky. Got a shot away, but it was blocked. Erickson coming down up foot race. He's being worked over. He's hauled down. Molnar takes him off the puck, as does Hansen. That was a hit. He was a sandwich, definitely. We're going to see what they're calling on this one. Not sure whether I didn't see a signal, but was Erickson ever taken off the puck and hauled down? Oh, yeah. He had it coming both ways. Here right, he is. Let's take a look. There's the hook. No call on that. No, I'm sure it's coming here on the defenseman. Maybe right interference? There. I don't know. Maybe because he didn't play the puck. We'll have that to see what Trevor Hansen. Says. I'm not sure what he called. I honestly uh, did not see. I saw part of a signal. Didn't see all of it. We'll have to Trevor wait obviously thought answer. it was a good check. He was questioning. And Molnar never got caught for the initial hook. 7-17 left. Coming to you from the Ladner Leisure Center, the PIJHL Hockey, North Dela Flyers, and Dela Ice Hawks, Tiny One. Trevor Hansen, two minutes for a holding. Time of the penalty at 12.43. Hansen for holding, 12.43 on the doorstep, trying to get the shot away. Kyle Ross couldn't get control of the puck. Chung had it, shot all the way out of the zone, clearing it. Down in the corner, across the goal line. Icing waved off, as we mentioned, Alan Mazur for the Ice Hawks in control. Comes out the right side, straight up the middle, trying to get it up to Raycott. Past him, inside the zone, forehand. Dumped it down the ice, inside the zone to Gillis. Gillis stops, turns, works his way out the right side. Straight up in front of the Flyers bench, comes down, pick up speed. Kyle Ross going in the front of the net, so is Morishita. Solid body check right there by Tyler Waycott. Waycott's playing strong offensively right on the doorstep. Gillis couldn't finish that check off. Straight out of their own zone. Up to center is Redman. Redman's coming down. Scores! A power play goal. No, a short-handed goal. goal. Yes. Correction on that. I was getting excited here. Short-handed goal. That will be a big factor in this game. Well, the key for that was they let him walk out of their own zone. Two, Without one, one. anybody taking him. Watch this. They let him. Okay. 
This is where they literally let him out of the zone. Watch this. Redman has it. Going down, fake the pass over to number 55, and that's Rinfret. Didn't get it over to Rinfret, but instead he shot on goal. And I also felt that number five, Stephen Gillis for the Hawks, he was coasting back. He needed to give that little bit more, and he might have had that second player, even though he didn't actually touch the puck. 50 seconds left North in the Delta minor Flyers penalty. Short-handed goal scored by number nine, Pat Rippend, uh, with the assist to number 55, Mark Rinkra, on 1342. Redmond. That's a, from Rinkra. Redmond from Rinkra. 2-1 for the Delta Flyers, North Delta Flyers. I have to be correct when we say which Delta team. Yeah. North Delta <laughs> Flyers are wearing black, orange, and white. Shot! Stopped by Hart. Big stop on Fuzzy. Cleared it all the way out to the neutral ice area. Golter comes down, walking in. Milner back, shot, stop! Oh, Thiessen come up with a golden stop right there. Minor penalty to Hansen's expired. Full strength, 5-10 left in the first period of play. Fuji stops after he was marked by Rinfret, who was just going to hammer him, couldn't get the shot away. Oh, misplayed the shot, couldn't finish it off, and Martin got hauled out. Taken out. Kept inside the zone and was on the blue line. Good call by the linesman. Erickson takes a poke at his man. No call. Play carries right on. Comes straight down. Inside the zone. Martin passed it. Off the boards to Erickson, all the way up the center. Erickson's going off on a line change. Dumped all the way back. I thought it was going out, out but it lobbed itself back up the center ice. Martin tried to get control of it. Carl Houston has it. Dumped it up the center. Kevin Batchelor's on the ice. First time I've seen Kevin on the ice in the first period of play. Number 44 for the Ice Hawks. Discussion down in the corner too. Yep. The trainer is attending to the injured player, and uh, his teammates are taking care of it down in the far end. Man, did he get smoked? Uh, his, it's his knees. Ben Forehand is down. He can't get up. He's Not having a lot of trouble. The player definitely went low and went for the knees or the Okay, ankles. let's take a look, and now we get the luxury of a replay. I know the referee saw. Watch this. Watch the call. He's got his head up. And look at that one. Oh, right for his right knees. For his oh, knees. you know what? It could be his Slow neck. Slow down. Let's see that one Let's, again. He he was in oh. the middle of a somersault and landed on the back of his neck. You can see the trainer holding his neck. So the knees are okay. It's oh, watch. He comes in low. Watch this. He takes the knees. Now watch Here's his neck. The somersault. Watch his neck. The way he flips over and hits his head. Oh. Got to be. Buddy, you know what? All credit to him. He's skating off on his own. Brent forehands up, but boy, oh boy, he's going to have an Excedrin headache tomorrow. Curious to see what they're going to call and how they're going to assess this one because... Uh, you can hear down in the penalty box. You can hear them. They're having a... Discussing the penalties that occurred down in the corner, not just the one that caused the injury. Oh, he's over there on the far side. There you can see him going down. He's going down the alleyway on the far side. Yeah, he's uh, he's going to be in a lot of pain for a while. That had to hurt. Well, you sure don't want to second guess anybody in a case like that. And you can hear the fans booing the player that just came in the penalty box, Hunt. They're not happy with him. He appears to be leaving. Well, the key for that is, uh, was that not him that did the check? Yes, it was. He is He's leaving. The Whether it's know for the him. period or for the game, I don't know. There's two minutes up, so it looks like that the Hawks are going to be shorthanded for two minutes, and I believe that's probably because of that original penalty. The rest of them all even out in the penalty The box. rest of them should be coincidental and cancel out. We've got a minor penalty up. When we get the announcements, we'll get to them. From the faceoff, Molnar is throwing out for those hurry up faceoffs that I detest. Jesse, Jesse Birch comes in from the draw, back out to Lee Rogers, back inside to Molnar. Molnar has control, trying to get it over to Birch. Looks, Molnar has control, back out of the point to Rogers. Shot scores! Goal. Watch 
this? shot from the point. Was that tipped by Birch? I don't know if he actually touched it, but you know, being a goaltender, I don't know how many times I tell my defenseman, move the man in front. And there he was all alone in front. All clear, the people standing around him. Clear him out in front. If you clear him out in front, man, oh man. Your goaltender will save almost all of them if he can see the puck. Keep the sticks down, let them see the puck. No exception about that at all, Annette. Dumped back inside the corner. Dolter had it. Dumped out of the zone. We'll have a stoppage of play and a face-off with 3.55 left. 3-1 in favor of the North Delta Flyers. Shane on the bench is a little bit concerned right now. Can't believe his team's actually down. They were up, and you look at the standings, as we mentioned earlier yeah, on, they were ahead of them by about 14 points. Definitely the favorites, probably, for this series. Well, you would think so. They've been in the league a long time, but different things happen. Shot, trying to clear it out, couldn't get control of it. Slash undetected, Morishita takes his man off the puck against the boards. Here's the announcement. And Richmond, uh, two minutes for roughing. Time of the penalty at 15.43. To the Dilt Ice Hawks, at number 24. Two minutes for tripping and a 10 minute misconduct. Serving the two minutes is number 44, Kevin Batchelor. So we got two for tripping and a 10 minute miss. The ice hawks number 22, Carl Houston, two minutes for roughing. Uh, time of the penalties also at 15 of 43. So we had a trip and a miss con at the other two are for roughing. So and the Lord Delta is the third goal. Roughing is coincidental. Here's the announcement. 21, RJ Horn. With the assist to number 17, Richard Molinar. Time of the goal at 15 of 35. Toygo on the ice for the Delta. Ice Hawks had the puck in the corner, took his man off the puck when he had it. Straight down across the line. Molnar goes in the corner trying to pick that one up. Birch with him. Birch has it. Tries a centering pass. Misplayed it. Nordy couldn't get out of the zone with the puck. Stop. Turn. Kept inside the zone by RJ Horn. Molnar taking off the puck. RJ Horn takes the shot on net. Birch tried to pick that one up. Shot. Off the boards, Nordy for the Ice Hawks in control. Nordy comes down. Nordy on the right side, gets hammered against the boards and a solid body check by Jeff Orban. This is going to be a physical series, Annette. Oh, it sure is. And you know that hit a little earlier, that's going to just set the pace for the rest of this game. Well, you know, the sad part is that he's got to come back. I mean, it's good for him, but just hope nobody does anything foolish to him. And I really hope that Ben Forehand is okay considering what we saw. Nice play to keep the puck onside and in the zone by Tyler Eckford. Shot out in the neutral ice area. Still in control. Just dumps the puck back in as Lee Rogers. Misplayed it. Picked up as Rinfrit. Rinfrit shot it inside the zone. Referee is trying to let the young guys play out here. Knocked out of the air, but not with a high stick. Erickson taking off the puck. Lee Rogers takes his man down. Picked back up inside. Fuji had a golden chance. Dolter takes the shot. Cross the goal mouth. Picked up by the Flyers. Rinfrit dumped it down the ice. Trying to take Erickson off the puck. The two of them mix it up and bump. Eckford and Erickson bump behind the play. Eckford's going off on a line change. Fighting for it in the corner. Orban. Oh, a bit of a run and a charge undetected by anybody. And Erickson took his man off the puck. Back out. Mazer, a long shot wide of the net. Going over the far side to Hunt. Hunt keeps it in on the goal mouth. Just lobbed it out to the neutral ice area. Rinford goes off on a line change. Gets some fresh legs out. Got some new legs Well, that was interesting. Yes, the was The linesman ever. waved it off. And then he put his arm up and blew it right away. I'm not sure what he was waving off. Maybe he was waving off an offside pass and then blew the icing, I'm not sure. Well, it's strange you talk about the offside pass or two-line pass, as uh, coaches and everybody else call it. This is the only league in the province, to the best of my knowledge, that actually has the two-line pass. Minor hockey does not play it. Women's hockey does not play it. That's and the right. BC Hockey League Junior A does not play it anymore. BIJHL Hockey from the Ladner Leisure Center. Beautiful downtown Ladner. North Dallas Flyers three, the other Ice Hawks one with 40 seconds remaining in this first period of play and a penalty indicated by Chris Hahn for a high stick. And I believe that's going to the Flyers. No. No, ice it's Hawks. going to the Ice Hawks again. That's the second penalty they've taken as in the a, attacking zone. Absolutely. As a coach, coaching this team, we've talked about Shane. I can imagine the one thing he's going to be talking to his players about, you can see it here off the face-off. See if we can see where
where the infraction occurred. Down into the corner. Right there. Yeah, he brought his stick up, and you really do have to be responsible for your stick. Yep. And you know, off my train of thought there about what he's going to talk to his players about, but I was just thinking about the Canuck game last night and how you have to be in control of your stick. We saw Todd Bertuzzi take a terrible injury last night from a goaltender trying to shoot the puck out, and his stick continued to follow through. It's so dangerous, and you got to be so careful. Well, that was Nabokov that hit him. That hit Bertuzzi last night. Yep. That was pretty That's wild. Bertuzzi for a high sticking. Bertuzzi for high sticking, 25 seconds left. Dumped. Couple players bump behind the play, undetected by the official. Morishita comes down across the line, gets hammered. Oh, Lee Rogers, did he ever hit him? We've got a penalty call right now for an elbow called by the referee. And now they're going to play even strength. They had a power play. The elbowing penalty has been called, and okay, he's not happy a, about it. Let's take a look at it and see if it's an elbow, and that you be the judge right here. Yeah, he. Uh, uh, he brought it up when he hit it. He actually brought it up. Not a lot like there a major. There is a size elbow. difference, though. <laughs> yeah, but he still brought it up. I mean, yeah, he definitely. Didn't, didn't bring it up to the point that it hit him on the head. And whether or not it's a reactionary thing when the two of them bumped and then it come out or not, I know Tim Keller's not overly pleased about it, but he's just talking to his players. They want to get out of this game right now. This period, leading by two goals. So now we're going to play even strength for the next little while. Yes, And we then will. the Ice Hawks will come out with a very, very short power play into the second period. All right, coming down across the blue line, in control for the Flyers. Number seven has it, dumped it all the way up to center ice. Dumping it inside the zone is Ostrowski. The whistle goes, the buzzer goes. You can certainly see the intensity in these uh, in these boys or these young men about uh, how much this game really means to them. And the North Delta Flyers are just playing an incredible game, and and they are obviously wanting to win this a lot more. Well, they than are. We, we talked about how aggressive it was going to be right from the outset, and we knew it was going to be aggressive. We knew it was going to be physical. We had a chance. We talked to both coaches before the game to see what their views were and how they wanted to play this one out. We knew it was going to be an aggressive game, but. I didn't realize, I wasn't uh, really sure that both teams were going to go and be as aggressive towards the net as what they are. Yeah, they're definitely playing a physical game. It's all been fairly clean. We've had a couple elbows. It's been fairly clean. The one hit we saw, which I think is kind of the exception, but other than that, the teams are just, they're definitely in it to win, and uh, they're just playing an incredible game. Yeah, well, I said we had a chance to talk to the coaching staff for the teams earlier on. We'll do the North Delta Flyers coach, Tim Keller, first. So let's get the thoughts from Tim. Joined by head coach of the North Delta Flyers, Tim Keller. Tim, you've had a very successful season after the move from Queens Park. Are you surprised that you made such advances in the season? Uh, I don't think we're surprised. No, as a staff and as a group, we were uh, pretty. We worked real hard in the off season to uh, to recruit the group that we did have, uh, and we do have, and. Uh, uh, so we're, we're happy with the progress we made through the season, and I think we're happy with the uh, certainly with the improvement over last year as well. Sure, got the fan base behind you up in the North Delta area. Well, I, I tell you, I can't take a lot of credit for that. Kenny Mills, our general manager, has just done a fantastic job of marketing the game, marketing the team in the community of North Delta, and it has been a community certainly that has embraced our club. They're just uh, they're a fantastic group. I'm sure they will be out on mass here in uh, in South Delta tonight as well. We're in a situation right now where we've actually got both teams in Delta playing each other in the first round of the playoffs. I'm pleased that both teams have made it in the playoffs, but I was a little bit dismayed because one of the teams was going to be beat out. That that frustrates me. Uh, well, I guess obviously a, a quality hockey team is going to lose. We uh, we picked up the fourth seed spot and Delta finishing in the third position uh, meant obviously that we ma matched up in the first round. Uh, I, I think undoubtedly a good hockey team is not going to move uh, move forward and and. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm hoping it's not us, but uh, but it, it's a, it's a good matchup. Uh, if the first game was any indication, it was exciting, uh, close hockey, and uh, with emotions running pretty high. And I suspect the same thing will uh, be in store tonight as well. What changes, if any, have you made going into the playoff round against the Ice Hawks? Well, we've made some adjustments throughout the course of the season against Delta because, uh, quite honestly, they've had our number all year. And uh, we found uh, we finally got some success in the last game of the season against them. Uh, we put some things in the memory bank and have uh, used some video to uh, to demonstrate to our kids uh, and group of players uh, what has been successful. And um, uh, we've been able to carry that through uh, one game in the in the postseason here as well. 
Starting goal ten tonight. Who's going to start in goal for you? Uh, we're starting Brandon Hart tonight. Uh, Maddie got the start and uh, and got the win for us in game one. Uh, but uh, with three games and three days, uh, we're going to have to utilize all of our players, goaltenders included, and uh, we're real uh, confident and comfortable going with Brandon tonight. You're looking at shorting your bench at all? You know what? Again, with the uh, with the number of games and the and the time frame, uh, you've got to be able to utilize the whole bench. Uh, certainly, there are guys in some critical situations that are going to play a little bit more. But I think uh, three games and three nights, it's going to be the team that can utilize all their staff is going to be successful. Okay. Last question before I let you go. You got a healthy squad going in in tonight's game. Uh, for the most part, healthy. Yes, uh, we are missing a couple of. Uh, role players, a couple of tough guys for our team. Kit Madkaluk has got a, uh, a tendon strain in his thumb that will keep him out of action tonight. Uh, we're hoping to get him back this weekend. And of course, uh, Mike the Chop Schmidt yes. uh, has a broken collarbone and unfortunately will not be back uh, this season with us. Okay, well, good luck with everything you do. And not only will Mike not be back, Mike's sporting a new hairdo too. So uh, <laughs> I, I saw that in the <laughs> website earlier. Yeah, it it's is, okay. Thanks very much, Tim, and good luck in the game. Thanks very much, Steve. Good words from the coach and uh, what he was going to talk about and stuff. And he said the young goaltender was very strong, playing strong in their own zone, uh, as always. So uh, proof is uh, in the pudding, I guess. Oh, absolutely. Um, how can a team ask for two strong <laughs> goaltenders like that? I mean, you got you got to play well when you've got strong goaltending. It's so nice for a coach to be able to switch back and forth. And just talking about goaltending, I was keeping track of the shots as best I could for the period. And the Ice Hawks actually outshot the Flyers by 17 shots to nine. So it just gives you an indication that the Flyers are up 3-1 to one and they've been outshot almost double. So that gives you an indication of how yeah. well he's playing. Well, we said we talked to the other coach as well and we're going to have a nice level right now and talk to Mr. Shane Cuss. Head coach for the Delta Ice Hawks, Mr. Shane Cuss. Shane, we're in a playoff round. You've been here before. Are you surprised that you're playing against the North Delta Flyers? Uh, no, we knew it was going to be either North Delta or Richmond. So, uh, you know, North Delta played well at the end of the year and, and you know, jumped into fourth place. So, you know, we knew we were going to play one of them, so just a matter of waiting to see to the final game what was going to happen. You've always had a strong team. What's the success for the team? Uh, we just have, I think we've got lots of depth throughout our lines. We don't really have, as you can see in the scoring leaders, we didn't never really had, a, in the last two years, never had a bona fide goal score that dominated the league or anything, but we had, you know, pretty good depth throughout our lines, and, and we feel we can play all our lines, so... You know, I think that's in the long run that helps you because you, you just wear out your top two two lines if you uh, if you don't have any depth down in your third and fourth lines. Got to be a nice feeling not only for yourself but the players. I mean, they know what you've done in the past. They've obviously have to learn something from your ability. Yeah, I mean, I just try to try to help them as much as I can. Obviously, you know, uh, you know the way I played and you know the way some of these guys play are, are somewhat similar but somewhat different too. Uh, you know, my when I played, it was just uh, you know a little bit different level. But you know, playoff hockey's playoff hockey, and you gotta it's it's so much different from regular season. You gotta take your bumps, you gotta take your bruises, and you gotta probably take your injuries and play through it. And and the team that comes away with the most uh, bruises will probably be at the end up the winner of the championship. Have you made any major changes or adjustments with the team going into the playoff round against the Flyers? No, not really. We we pretty much have got the same lineup as as we had. When we finished and uh, you know kept for the most part kept one most guys together we've made you know one or two changes for this game but for the most part we've kept it pretty uh this pretty much the same pretty healthy going into the game tonight uh we're too short so uh you know mike goche is playing up with team bc right now and and uh perry got suspended last game so other than that we're you know we're pretty healthy and last question you're not starting your regular goaltender no, I, you know, I, I thought Jason played all right, uh, you know, last game. But, you know, I mean, it's pretty hard when you got, you know, what we had in the second period there. We were killing penalties, you know, for the whole period, five on three for eight straight minutes. I mean, you know, five on five, we were pretty dominant against them. But, uh, you know, Jason played fine, but we just wanted to kind of shake things up, shake the team up a little bit and realize, you know, that, uh, you know, they got to play for whoever's in there and they got to play to their best of their abilities. Yeah, good luck in the game and thanks for your time. Thank you. All right, that was another great interview. It's so nice to hear from the other coaches. And uh, my dad has snuck down to ice level. For those of you who don't know, I am doing this with my dad tonight. And he snuck down to ice level with a special guest, and we're just waiting for him to get ready. So as soon as he's ready, we're going to join him down there. Thanks, Annette.
Joined down ice level right now by the supervisor for officials for the game tonight and also BC Amateur Referee Committee member, Mr. Randy Pornell. Randy, first, thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule. And I say busy very honestly because I know you're a busy man this time of year. Thanks for doing this. Oh, you're welcome, Steve. Okay, now, as a supervisor going into a game like this, we're not going to naturally discuss any situations on the ice. Supervisor, what are you looking for? What I like to instruct my guys is uh, to be aware. Be aware of situations, be aware of what's happening. Uh, I guess just being aware of everything that's going on. Uh, and that starts right from the start of the year, naturally, but more so in the playoffs. There shouldn't, or I'm assuming there shouldn't be much supervision done for the players the play in, or the officials in the playoffs. Just more or less a guidance? Yeah, it's just sort of to, to keep an eye on things and it, when things pop up throughout the course of a game, just to, to go down and remind the boys afterwards, you know, well, what, you know, what our standards are and just to reinforce things that have been taught throughout the season. And, of course, it doesn't hurt uh, having a junior team like the Vancouver Giants in town because a lot of our officials doing this level want to aspire to get up to that level. Well, that's very true. And uh, we have uh, put some officials from this league into that league, and uh, that's what keeps me around is <laughs> being able to push guys forward and on to bigger and better things. And we should say some of our officials have even gone on beyond there into work in the National Hockey League, which we're very proud of. Let's talk about the season in general as uh, the RCM, considering Delta is your area that you're involved with. How has it gone for the Delta area? It's, it's gone very well. I've got two very good people in both North and South Delta that I've worked with this year, uh, Ed Mazey and Roger Frew of North and South Delta, and they have done an outstanding job from what I've you know, been able to work with these two guys this year. Well, communication, I was talking to Peter Zerbinas, the referee chief for the province earlier on, and the one thing Peter was alluding to is that uh, it sure takes away from your on ice time as far as a referee. There is no on ice time. <laughs> That's uh, it's, it's very busy. There's a lot of meetings to go to. There's uh, a lot of dealing with paperwork and phone calls, and you just really don't have time to, to be out on the ice. Any rule interpretations or possible rule clarifications we should maybe be looking at for the next season? Well, uh, I haven't really had a chance to uh, see any new rules that have come down. Uh, of course, this year coming up, uh, 2003 is a rule change year. Uh, I know there have been a lot of rules that were proposed. Uh, whether or not they actually get passed, uh, I, I can't really comment on that. How's the hurry-up face-off? Last question for you. How's the hurry-up face-off rule appear to be working? I personally believe it's working very well. I, I've noticed the, the speed of the games has increased greatly. Uh, we were probably shaved off about 10 minutes on actual playing game time. Uh, of course, some rinks uh, do like to do promotions and that, which kind of cuts into the speed of the games. But I, I think once uh, the, the actual play is in motion, uh, the games are at very fast pace. Okay, Randy, we know you're a busy man. You've got a lot to do later on tonight. Thank you very much for your time, and good luck not only with the rest of this season, but uh, yourself and the other two RCMs in the years ahead. Well, thank you very much, Steve. I appreciate it. And we're going to take a bit of a timeout and come back with the second period action right after this opening faceoff. People and parents today are facing a variety of challenging issues, particularly with respect to drinking and driving, alcohol and drug use. The choices and decisions made regarding these issues carry with them significant impact. I'm Constable Brooks with the Delta Police Department. Our department is committed to working together with youth and parents in our community to provide insight that will better equip our young people to make positive choices and provide parents with information and resources available. The Delta Police are hosting interactive forums for young people grades 7 to 12 and their parents, where we will take an in-depth look at the impact and effects of drinking and driving, road safety issues, alcohol and drug use. We will also inform parents on drug recognition and signs of drug use. Our department would like to take the opportunity to interact with parents and young people in the community to promote awareness, educate, and inform you on the realities of the decisions we make. Our first forum will take place on March 11th at 7 p.m. at Siaquam Secondary Theatre. We'll be holding our next forum on May 27th at 7 p.m. at North Delta Secondary. You are welcome to attend the one closest to you or the date that is most convenient. Our goal is to reach the youth and parents of our community with information so everyone can be better informed of the realities of the choices and decisions that you make. We will also offer resources that are available to parents and young people. Everyone is invited. So we'll see you at Siakum Secondary Theatre on March 11th at 7 p.m. 
If you think TV's getting boring, think again. With digital cable, you get a whole lot more. Order pay-per-view movies from the channels you want. Order multicultural channels for South Asian, Chinese, and Greek programming. Find out more about digital cable. Give us a call at 946-7676. Here's a real treat for you music lovers. Max Tracks Digital Music. With digital cable, you receive 40 channels of commercial-free digital music from classical, jazz, rock, reggae, folk, baroque, blues, and 33 more channels. The good news, these 40 music channels are all included with our digital cable service. For more details, give us a call at 946-7676. You're watching DCTV, your eye on Delta. Welcome back to the Latin Leisure Center for PIJHL playoff action game number two. Tonight's matchup, the North Delta Flyers and the Delta Ice Hawks. North Delta Flyers leading by a score of three to one. Both teams serving minor penalties in that. But what a fast first period of play. Oh yeah, this has been an incredible, very enjoying game. Like the fans that are here, they're just, they don't even have time to cheer because it's been <laughs> so fast. I was just uh, listening to the interviews that you did with the coaches before the game and uh, heard some interesting notes. I've seen a lot of old faces down here that uh, I haven't seen in years. And they talked about how they got great community support in North Delta. And it's funny because I grew up in North Delta and played hockey there. And uh, I see a lot of faces that were there when I was playing. So how can you ask for better community support than, than having those come out? And my old coach's son is actually playing on one of the teams tonight. So your it's uh, old interesting. Coach, your old coach's son is actually the captain for North Delta, Richard Molnar. And Dick used to coach you. Second period just underway from the draw. It's dumped inside the zone. North Delta Flyers, as we mentioned in the first period, were in black, orange, and white jerseys. Ice Hawks were in blue, white, and black jerseys. Houston dumps the puck inside the zone. Going over on the far side, Erickson trying to pick this one up, failed to do so. Mazur takes a long shot from the point, dumped it in the corner. Erickson picks this one up behind the net. Erickson taken off the puck by Eckford. Eckford just left that, Redmond picks it up. Redmond stops, turns, good move as he comes out of the boards, up the zone, up to center. Couldn't get up to the man he wanted to, and that was McNeely. Solid body check in front of the penalty box, and Fortuna getting leveled. Fortuna's going off on a line change. Looks to be favoring his shoulder, but little Danny be back. I like that guy, he's a big little spark plug. Dolter still in control. I'm just noticing on the uh, paperwork, and we'll get to it. We'll have to see if we can get a camera shot of the young goaltender playing for the Ice Hawks. It looks like they've changed goaltenders to start the second period of play. Cross the blue line. Shear has it. Taking it behind the net. Dolter has him all tied up. Kyle Ross comes in to pick that one up. Fuji comes out of the penalty box at center. Get extra legs out. Ross comes down across the blue line. Morris sheet is with him. Ross cuts down on the right side. Going in, taking it behind the net. Dumped it back out to Dolter at the line. Dolter, big long shot right on net. Morris sheet couldn't finish that one off. A bit of a hack on the forearm. And Hansen got hammered. Back out to the point. Dolter, shot. Didn't get good wood on that one in the minor. Penalty to the Flyers. And that number seven, Lee Rogers, has expired. Team's back at full strength now. 18 minutes left in this second period of play. Dolter had the puck, lobbed it straight up. Glove hand pass called by the official. Good call, Annette. Yeah, and we definitely have a goaltending change for the Ice Hawks. If we can zoom in, there you can see number one, Jason McClenahan. I understand he had an exceptional game in game one, and I think that the coach, Shane Kessler, is probably trying to shake up his team 
and uh, shake shake things up and make things go better. I had a chance to talk to Jason throughout the course of this season, and man, is he ever an exceptional young man. I really like the kid. Good guy. Jason has played 1,086 minutes. He's made 652 saves, and he has a save percentage of point, 0 0.92. So very, very respectable, and this guy is agile. He's like a cat. He can get up and down on the drop of a pin. Yeah, and Good I, young man. And I don't think it's anything bad against the other young goaltender that was playing Thiessen. No. He was playing very well, but his team wasn't performing in front of him. Thiessen and obviously played they strong. needed to make a change. Thiessen played strong. That was good. There was nothing wrong with switching goaltenders in a situation like that. The uh, Ice Hawks get the gain on this one as they get an offside call. They called it an intentional or deliberate offside. So it'll go all the way back down into the Flyers' end zone, have a face-off. Molnar taking the draw for the Flyers. Ostrovsky takes it for the Icehawks. Won it, takes a long shot right on goal, and Hart made the stop. All the way out to center ice. Nice pick up, a nice pass. Ostrovsky takes the shot off the boards. Far side is R.J. Horn. R.J. Horn dumps it in the corner, goes back after, tries to pick it up. Horn fighting for the puck. Right side. Sherbrooke loved it. Just inside the zone, Jesse Birch has control. Birch misplayed that one, picked back up inside the zone. Ostrovsky dumped that out off the boards, all the way up the center. Birch tried to pick that one up on a back pass. Birch in control. Comes down the left side, going in, tries a centering pass on net. Didn't get it back to the intended partner. Solid, solid hit in the attacking zone. And man, are they ever laying the wood on the bodies out there, too. Playing very strong, very aggressive. Going in, shot on goal, big stop by McClenahan. I told you this kid's good. <laughs> Making his debut. <laughs> you oh, can I see like he him. was ready. Nothing better than to come out and challenge the shooter. Young goaltenders at home, you've got to watch this. Okay, right from the blue line, Annette. He goes across. You can see the centerman open. He's going to go into the slot. Watch the goalie come out. Challenge him and take away the angle. Take away the net. A fantastic save. McClenahan is a good goaltender. I've watched him play, and like I say, I had a chance to talk to him over the course of the season. I really like the young guy. Watch him, Kenny Mills comes in and sitting down just to our broadcast location right in front of us. Minor penalty being called, going to the North Delta Flyers. Erickson comes down across the line. Penalty indicated by the referee. Chris Hahn, we have a penalty. I'm not sure what it is. Tripping minor going to be assessed to Dan Gurney. Dan Gurney is an affiliated player coming up from the Midget A team in the North Delta Minor Hockey Association. You can tell an affiliated player because the affiliated players, as I was mentioning earlier on tonight to some people that asked me that, the affiliated players wear a full face mask. It's mandatory for minor hockey, so that's what they do. Well, that must be quite an honor for him to be called up for playoff time. Well, yeah, especially playoff time, yes. That's got to be a real pat in the back, you know, to uh, come up and play in this. They're allowed to play so many games, and uh, even to be here, even if he didn't play, just to sit on the bench is a real honor indeed. Just to be part of it. That's right. Dumped all the way back down inside the zone. McClanahan leaves that one for Houston. Houston comes out the right side. Up to Mazur. Mazur cross ice pass to Erickson. This line's potent. Two minutes for inside. Fortuna. The penalty at Fortuna. Back. Houston a shot off the toe Griffin. of Hart. Deflected that in the corner. This line is powerful. I've seen them come out before. Fuzzi takes his man off the puck. Fortuna stops, turns, coming up the center ice, spin, moves. Fuzzi dumps it inside the zone. Trying to pick that one up is Orban. Orban cleared it, not out, kept inside. Mazer over to Erickson. Erickson takes his man off the puck. Houston goes after that, dump the neutral ice area. Houston comes up. Again takes his man off the puck. Going back inside the zone. Looks, cross ice pass, trying to get it over to Fuji. Ross has it. Going down, Ross couldn't get control of it. Bodies flying on the doorstep. Officials got to get in and separate everybody, but Kyle Ross had an exceptional opportunity to finish that one off. Just couldn't get, couldn't get it to do what he wanted it to, and that. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to have another look at it here. It's stuck in their feet. And you know, he didn't know where the puck was, and he managed to uh, get the backhand on it. Not quite as hard as he wanted to, like you said, but Hart was ready for it. No, and, and Tyler Chung, number eight for the North Delta Flyers, did a good job taking Kyle Ross off the puck right on the doorstep, clearing the traffic out and moving away from the draw. Morishita picks that one up. Morishita goes down close to the wall on the right side, failed to get control of that. Morishita picks it up as the Flyers couldn't clear it out of their own zone. Dolder inside, Gillis. 
stops, turns, goes around, dumps it in the corner, back out. Nice play as he gets it into Waycott. Waycott has control, back out to Gillis. Gillis back out of the point once again to Dolter. Shot, a lot of traffic in front. Gillis couldn't stop that. Dolter has it. Looks wide open. What's he going to do with it? Stops, turns, back inside his own zone, off the boards. Kyle Ross has control for the ice hawk. Morris should have taken off the puck. Far side, looking the way in the zone, going in. Waycott goes in. Fake the shot. Pass out. Dolter goes in. Gets around one man. Fake the shot. Pump action. Going in. Nice knockdown with a hand. Play carries right on as he picked it up himself. Shot. Rolled through the goal crease. Morishita takes a punch. Back at Hansen. Two of them mixing it up in the doorstep. Morishita skates back down. Icing called. Boy, they're getting aggressive on the ice out yeah. here. They're playing hard. I think the Ice Hawks seem to have picked up their game a little bit. I don't know what Shane said to them in the dressing room, but whatever he said, it's working. I can imagine what he said in the dressing room. I know Shane. There's the long shot. Now, good move because that was actually blocked by Lee Rogers in front there, but it was a well-placed shot. Morishita, in that case, and that couldn't pick up the rebound. Yeah, and I think if you're watching, if the play would have continued on a little bit longer there, the Flyers have got to start pushing the players out of their goaltender's crease. They're really pushing the goalie back into his net. Well, that's what they're trying to do. We've got a broken stick out on the ice. Birch broke it, goes back off on a line change, gets some fresh lumber, gets some fresh legs out. McNeely comes out in place of Birch. Goes down, R.J. Horn across the line. Horn lost his stick, in fact, his stick broke. <laughs> He's gotta go out on a line change. We've got two broken down sticks. Molnar, come in! Shot, no, blocked off the stick! Oh, McClinahan made the big save! That two he's counted on. Big man, going down. Kept inside the zone, fighting for it. McNeely trying to kick the puck loose. Molnar still in the corner. McNeely goes at the doorstep, wide open. They're trying to clear the stick out of the way. They finally throw the, the broken stick on the far side. Hunt tried to clear the puck out, kept in the zone. Blocked at the point by Orban. Orban tees it up, takes a shot. Back out to Orban. Orban lobs it in the corner. Behind the net is Mazur. Mazur mixes it up with Hunt. Whistle goes. We've got a stoppage of play, and we're going to get some fresh legs out. 13-21 left in this second period of play. North Delta Flyers lead the Ice Hawks. Score three to one. And there we can see you're looking at the standings again. At the difference in the standings, we've got third place versus fourth place, both North, both Delta teams, and you can see that the Ice Hawks were significantly ahead in the standings by 13 points. But you certainly wouldn't be able to tell with the caliber of hockey that they are playing tonight. No, and it was interesting to note that North Delta and Richmond were both tied with 40 points in the season. That season end. And I think it comes down to games one. It comes up to games one, and that's why they come out and ended up giving the final standings to them. And the other thing I find interesting is I was listening to the coaches again in your interview, and, and I found it funny to say that um, Ted, I believe, is the coach for the Flyers. Yep said that uh, the Ice Hawks have had their number all year. That's Timmy. And, and Timmy, and now we're into the playoffs and it's totally reversed. Well, they're playing hard and the fans are clearly entertained by what they're seeing tonight. No question about that. Flyers on the attack inside the zone and that's Gurney. Gurney got out of the, on the ice once he finished serving that minor penalty in the attacking zone once again, trying to clear the puck out is Nordy. Nordy got it all the way up the ice. Straight up to Turberg. Turberg still in control as he got around one man. Mazur reaches for it, couldn't put lumber on it. Mazur taking off the puck. Kyle Ross comes up. The two of them bump push. I think we could have a couple of minor penalties in front of the net if we watch them. Yeah. They're both going to go. Definitely. Take them both. That was a well-placed call because they both got the penalty. They both deserved what they did. They were both messing around in front of the goal crease. Yeah, and again, I don't know. I guess I have to keep saying it here. We're going to have a look at it again. Okay, take a look at this one right on the doorstep. Now, if we take a look in front of the net, these are coincidental minors that we've just had assessed. All the way back out, we can see it right there, and that's Dolter with the puck. But the Ice Hawks got the penalty for goaltender interference. The Flyers got the puck for cross-checking. The penalty for cross-checking. Or the penalties, pardon me, <laughs> pardon me. They might get the puck too. <laughs> very likely, very likely. We will see, Lee Rogers had it, dumped it all the way up the center, Birch had it, lobbed it in the side of the net. McClellan goes out of the net to stop that, couldn't pick that one up, Birch comes in to hammer his check. Dolter takes it in the corner. 
second period. You're watching PIJHL hockey coming to you from the Ladner Leisure Center. 3 1 in favor of the North Delta Flyers. Second period of play, 12.05 remaining. Fortuna shot. Man, did he lead into that one. Danny's got a good wicked shot when he uses it all the time. Sometimes he doesn't get the wood on it that he wants to be. Icing is waved off. Going after that is Alan Mazur. Shot it all the way up the center ice. Wicott tried to pick that one up, lobbed back inside the zone, misplayed it, took a stutter step, fell down. Mazur lost his balancing, and everybody's falling down on the ice out there. Covers that one up. Smart, alert move to cover up in that one. Going in, get some fresh troops out. The lines will move in to separate everybody, so cooler heads do prevail out there. It'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Now that the Ice Hawks have had to put McClenahan in goal tonight, the coaches were saying that they have three games in three days and they're trying to give their goaltenders a bit of a rest. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Ice Hawks start their next game, <laughs> who they're going to put in. Now they're kind of stuck. Uh, they've got lots of depth. I think goaltending is definitely one of the stronger points for both of these teams. With Carl Houston having a discussion with referee Chris Hahn. Obviously, Carl's pleased with what he said because he didn't question it any further. Left, went back over. Ross won the draw. Kept inside the point. Morishita straight down. Ross come down. Morishita drives for the net, going down. Morishita's all tied up. Takes the shot. They jam the front of the net again. Penalty indicated. Oh, this is interesting. We've got a scrum in front of the net. We've got a cross-checking minor penalty. Watch this as they all jam. Morishita's all tied up. You can see him right there. Morishita's actually the one that's hauled down on the side of the net. There it is, right there on the side of the net. I don't even, I don't know if I would call it a cross-checking, but, I mean, there was definitely an infraction there. It's easy for me to say because I have the video replay to see exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah, we do. We've got a bit of a discussion at the penalty box, and uh, there was a discussion at the end of that play. So oh. now the Ice Hawks are going to have power play. And special teams have played such a huge part in this game. Short-handed goals, power play goals. One of the starts for power, the stats right now for power plays. The Hawks are zero for two because every time they seem to get a power play, it gets null and void because they get a penalty. So we're zero for two right well, now. They should be one for two because they scored on oh, the first me, one. Oh, pardon me, one for two. Yes, you're They're right. One for two right now. Yeah, my, and my the mistake. Flyers are two. Are the two for two for four? Wow. Uh, we'll see how and it plays. And See how it plays out. Nice stop by Hart to flex that one in the corner. Shot all the way out and down the ice. 10.55 left in this second period of play. Houston goes back, picks that one up as McClenahan leaves that one for him. Houston picks it up behind the net, trying to do a little bit of a move to get away from Chad Richmond. Left that one wisely to Stephen Gillis. Gillis picks it up, takes it behind his net. McClenahan directing traffic, telling everybody where to go and how to get there. No one took terms. Called for the two lines. The coaching staff is saying, wait a minute, that's not two lines. That well, that's what I was talking about earlier on. If you think it's hard for the players to adjust going from league to league and level to level, the officials have to adapt going from minor hockey into this and up into the junior A circuits because minor hockey and the junior A's do not play that. Rumor has it that they could, and I say could, take it out of this league for next season, but not it right now. It certainly opens up the game. Oh, from a goaltender, you've got to be a nightmare. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sure keeps you wise. Up out of play, everybody's awake. And, and talking and, uh, about paying attention. Well, we talked about that. see our young fans being held, and one of the ladies giving the young lad a puck. That's very nice. He's got a souvenir from the game. Well, she never spilled her milkshake. That's one thing I noticed. <laughs> I see Shane Cuss over on the far side. Shane's trying to talk to him, but Shane's saying, how can I ask you a question when you won't even talk to me? I know what Shane's saying because I've talked to him about this before. Shane's you can just tell a, by the expression on his face. Well, Shane's played a good level of hockey. I mean, Shane's played, uh, you know, in Europe, and the BC Hockey League holds a scoring record for the BC Hockey League. And he's just a, a great, great, talented individual. As we mentioned earlier on, also played one of his line mates was Scotty Gomez with the New Jersey Devils. Shot off the backboards. Picked up once again by Ostrovsky. Tried to dump it out. Houston has control. Houston dumps it back in. Gets it back, shot, deflected up, off the mesh. 
Faceoff stays deep inside the corner. Houston took that shot, and Turbert was the one that deflected that one up as it uh, went off the goaltender as well. And now that we're going to be having a faceoff, a little bit of uh, <laughs> information I wanted to touch on was the hurry up faceoffs. I know as a player, I don't like the hurry up faceoffs. You're too rushed when you're trying to make a change, there's no chance to get a rest, but they seem to be really pushing it. Well, they're pushing it to speed up the ice time, uh, you know, the game as well as ice time. The, uh, oh, there's a bit of a cross check right there, and no call. Of course, everybody's frustrated. Except the uh, North Delta Flyers, they, I guess, they didn't mind that. I guess my concern about the hurry-up face-offs is that you're paying for a certain amount of ice time, and you seem to be getting rushed, and you're not getting that ice time. You're not fulfilling the whole time. So, from from my perspective, we don't like it. No, there's a lot of players that I talk to that don't like the hurry-up face-off. They say we don't mind, but don't. If you're going to put the hurry-up face-off in, give us a little more time. Ten seconds would work. Yeah, ten seconds Five would be is great. Too rushed. Well, I, I mean, I'm the same as you. We have an offside call right there, and Fuji is the one that uh, you, takes the puck over for the offside call. You truly barely have enough time to make your line change, and you better get over there right now and know what your teammates want because there's no chance to set up and well, get organized. We've seen the puck dropped. I've even had people do the puck. The linesman drop the puck when the players are behind him on the opposite sides. Yes. And it really messes everybody up. So then you got to stop the play, reorganize it, reset everybody up. Wasting again. time. <laughs> yes. Erickson lost his balance, fell down. Dolter takes the shot, and Erickson comes in and gives a little bit of a cross-check back. A lot of cross-check and uh, pushing in front of the net uh, going. I know it's seen, but it's just uh, undetected, as they tell us. I know this is interesting. There's nine seconds left in the penalty to the Flyers. We, we as of yet, don't have a goal for the Ice Hawks, so they'll, they'll continue on at one for three if, if they make it through this penalty. But well, uh, they are definitely out shooting the Flyers at this point. Well, we'll see how things go and how things play out. From the draw, Ross took it behind the net. Back out, Houston a shot off, Ross's foot in front of the net. Minor penalties expired, so we should be what? One for, One for three, 33% on the power plays right now. Not working as well as Mr. Cuts would like. He'd love him to work a little better. Mind you, Shane would work nothing. Go down, Ross. Call down. Oh, this could be interesting. What's your call? Penalty shot and had a trip. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't really think he had a clear open I chance. I want to see. So this could be a see. call. Penalty only, I see. Penalty. Yeah, penalty. Tripping penalty. He wasn't in the clear completely. They were pretty much side by side. As a defensive play, probably a smart play because he probably prevented a goal. Very likely, but you never know. The way the we goaltenders are playing, the way the goaltenders are playing, RJ Horn gets the penalty. Watch this. Look. Bad play. He obviously bad pass. He fanned on yeah, it. Yeah, fanned on it. Now here we go. They're even, even in stride. Still at that point, he didn't have care and control of the puck, and he hit the stick. So, good call by the official. I say. Good call by Chris Hahn. Heads up again. Heads up. <laughs> Almost hit our camera guy at the penalty box, and that one very close. He didn't even see that one coming. <laughs> Malcolm, we got to get you a helmet down in the penalty box. Malcolm in the middle. And is he ever in the middle? Chris Hahn's jumping like a spring rabbit down there. Shot. Go. Take that. Muller gets rocked in the corner. Birch picks that one up, tries to jam it in. No. McClanahan stops him. Not going to get a shot on goal that way. Molnar's the last one out of the zone. No, Molnar's back at center. Birch is lagging. He needs a bit of a line change. Going down. Lost in control. Center best. Scores. Oh, beautiful goal. More Brendan Morishita scores a power play goal. Yes, a power play goal. So now they're two for four on the power play. Now both teams are even on the power play. Wow, that was a beautiful shot. I find it, I find it kind of neat though that the way the Ice Hawks set up. You want okay, we're a little further ahead than where I wanted to be, but watch watch this. Nice shot up to the middle in the slot. And look at again, nobody on the player in front. You have to be out there and clear the man in the front. The question for that is where is the defense? Both defensemen, mind you, they were one player short, but the D-man let him go. There was nobody with them. You can't you can't let the D-man walk in and the goaltender undetected like that. Yeah, and, and the way the Ice Hawks break out, they come two out of their zone, and their third forward is already up on the blue line waiting for the rest of them to come across and then manages to slide back. They know. The they play that seagull rule very, very well. Garrett Hunt going after the puck in the corner. Get a body check come in. I'm not sure whether this is going to be a check from behind or what. We have a player down. My guess, it could be a check from behind. No boarding. He called boarding in that. I wonder 
you got to wonder if they were trying to go after Hunt, number 24 here that we're looking at, because you've got to think they have his number from the hit he made in the first period. Probably because we've got Kevin Batchelor down on the ice, the trainers coming out for the Delta Ice Hawks. Looks like he might have winded himself. Well, Obviously, as a cause of the hit, but... Kevin's on the ice. Referee's uh, going down. Referee's going to check the situation now, out. Now, here we have the situation. Both teams are two for four on the power play. You'll see Hunt coming in there. Okay, here's He's gonna the go hit. He's going to go for the puck. Now, here's the hit. We're not quite going to get it. No, he, he knew he was hitting, so... I don't know whether we, I don't know whether we got it from a Ice Hawks says second goal scored by number 19. Here's the announcement of the goal. Brandon Morishida with the assist of number two, Kyle Ross. At number 16, our Tyler Waycott. At time of the goal, at 11.41. That's Morishita from Ross and Waycott. I think Kevin appeared to be winded in that case because uh, he's sort of holding his midsection right there. Yeah, he seems to be getting better. And uh, skating well, off on his own, that's always good to see. That's always a nice sign. Now, yeah, you talked about that hit in the first period. That was pretty wild. Yeah, and I and I don't know if the player that got hit is back. I haven't uh, seen him out on the ice I yet. I have not seen him back on the ice, and the player you're in questioning and talking about is Ben Forehand, number four. I have not seen him on the ice. I haven't even seen him on the bench. And here you can see live from the Ladner Leisure Center in Delta, British Columbia, we have a 3-2 hockey game. The Flyers are leading the Ice Hawks in the second period. 7.55 left in the second period of play. Right down on goal, McClenahan picks that one and stops it. Back checking tenaciously is Chad Richmond trying to play catch up right now. Long pass to Kyle Ross. Across the line, Morishita goes to that. Waycott dumps it in the corner. Morishita takes his man off the puck, finally picks the puck up. Morishita lost it, picked up in the corner, fighting for it, trying to kick it loose as Eckford. Waycott dumped it back in the corner. Morishita left that for Kyle Ross. Ross waiting. Hunt on the doorstep, trying to jam it. No, Morishita missed his second goal. Back out. Waycott, we've got a penalty coming up now. I wouldn't be out surprised. It has to go to the Ice Hawks because the Ice Hawks had possession. I believe we have coincidentals. Whoa, I believe they're good. both going. Hunt is going. Yeah, and so are the Flyers. He blew it down right away. Now we we'll take a look. See if we can pick it up in front of the net. Watch the front of the net in front of the goaltender. You can see Hunt there with the red helmet. And I guess it's going to continue on. The puck's going to go up to the point. And there you can see the cross check made by the Flyers. Now, I'm not sure what Hunt did to retaliate. He must have started it. They called roughing for Hunt, and they called a minor for cross checking to the North Delta Flyers. But I'm in agreement with you in that. I did, I, out of my camera angle, I did not see what uh, Hunt did in that case. And of course, that Garrett Hunt, number 24. I never saw it. Here's the announcement. 77, Jeff Orban, two minutes for cross checking. And to the Delta Ice Hawks, number 24, Garrett Hunt. Two minutes for roughing. Our time of the penalty is at 36. Stop full. Good stop by Hart. Cross checking. A lot of traffic come in on this play. Yeah, they're letting too much traffic come into where their goaltender is. They've got to stop it. They're going to have an injury if they don't. Well, they're jamming the net all the time, and that they're going to do that. If, they've got to clear them out. We keep saying that over and over and over. Lines will move in. Cooler heads do prevail. You talked it earlier on, Annette, uh, about players must be in control of their sticks, you know, at all times. We uh, also talked about Todd who else? Bertuzzi. Todd Bertuzzi yep. getting hit in the stick. Uh, in the face, rather, with the stick, and that was... Uh, oh, yeah, gold Nubak stick of all. <laughs> yes, Nubakov was the one that hit him, and the interesting part with that was Nubakov going into that game. He was voted last week by the NHL, the Hockey News, with the goaltender in the NHL for the fastest glove hand. Wow. And uh, he sure proved it when they played and the San Jose Sharks defeated the Vancouver Canucks. He seems to have our number. Knocked him off the streak. Long shot deflected in front. Fortuna dumped it back up to the point. Lobbed all the way out and down the ice. Minor penalty being served by the North Delta Flyers. For checking aggressively is Redmond. Still trying to work it out of their own zone. Cross ice pass over to Mazer. Mazer down the left side. Mazer's taken off the puck. Here's the announcement. Two minutes for roughing. And to number 18, Macy Turborg. Two minutes for roughing. Time of the penalties at 
That's McNeely for roughing and Turborg for roughing. Delayed penalties out. Broken stick. Broken stick. We are seeing a lot of broken sticks tonight. Now this is, I say this is foolish. North Delta, follow me with this one. North Delta serving a minor penalty. When the referee indicated the penalty call to North Delta, there was 21 seconds left in the minor penalty to North Delta. Yep. Ice Hawks had possession of the puck. Referee indicates a second penalty to North Delta. As a flyer, or pardon me, as a Delta Ice Hawks player, why would you not pass the puck to him and get an automatic whistle? They killed literally That's right. 14 seconds yep. off of that. So now they're only going to have a two-man advantage for three seconds, as opposed to having the two-man advantage. That's exactly right, for, for 21, 21 seconds. 21 seconds. So now here we go. We're back to a one-man advantage again. Shot back. Oh, long pass, a foot race going down. McClellahan's not going to let him get control of that. He's going to cover that thing up like a turtle in the sand. I know that. Yeah, you don't Smart want to move. have a, a, but a there, face off in your zone, but he had no choice. But there's a situation. We talked about awareness and how you have to understand the game and what you're doing with it. You know, you should know that the other team's getting a penalty. You've got to come down and say, look, we know you're getting a penalty. We've got to give him the puck. That's something that the bench, if they didn't notice, the bench should have hollered at him. Pass him, give him the puck, give him the puck. Yeah, definitely. Like we said before, it's easy for us to say up here, but oh, it very would have been so. a very smart play. That happens, but I've seen that happen a couple times in the uh, Canuck games, too, when the Canucks were getting penalties and the opposition kept control of the puck instead of passing it to him. Three dollars. Please get your tickets from our Referees yeah. over talking to the coaching staff for the North Delta Flyers. Referee Chris Hahn, linesman Tim Digby, and Phil Roberts. From the draw, Carl Houston shot it, not out, kept inside the zone, at the point. Nice play, and R.J. Horn dumped it back in the corner. Picked up by Kyle Ross. Ross straight up the middle, 5.40 left in this second period of play. Long lead pass to Morishita, stays onside. Ross going to the corner, is he ever hauled out? Play carries right on. Referee watches the play and says, let's move it, boy, we're doing fine. Ostrowski. Takes Morishita, and boy, is he ever getting hooked over tonight. He's going to be a black and blue boy when this game finishes tonight. Morishita still in control. A little bit of a high stick. Gillis comes out, takes his man off the puck, working the way out the center, and R.J. Horn down across the line. Going in, centering pass, shot, trying to deflect in front. Molnar takes his man off the puck, behind the net, and that was Houston. Long pass all the way up the center. Luck, stop. Got to get onside. They get onside. Oh, they were oh, careful, oh. boys, for too many men. Boy, that could have been costly for them. But they're paying attention, and they caught on to it right away. Oh, how could Good they job. not? Good job. That was, boy, but that could have been dangerous if, if Molnar, of course, he's team captain, but if Molnar had it just reached around and got possession of that and touched it, they would have been called for too many men. Now we've got penalty box full. Timekeeper calls him over and said, I think we've got a couple of people that are going to vacate the premises here. Come on over and escort the boys out of the way so we've got more writing room. So that's what they do now? They hit the horn and have them come over? Well, rumor has it that Malcolm, our cameraman in the box, said, get these guys out of here. They're bothering me. <laughs> We'll have to get a shot of Malcolm in the penalty box, and we've got a whole bunch of players around there, and, and I think we'll get some more in there. But Malcolm's doing a great job, as are the rest of our volunteer people with Delta Cable, doing a great job bringing you this Delta Cable sports broadcast. Our pleasure to bring it to you. North Delta 3 and the Delta Ice Hawks 2, 432 left in this second period of play. Coming to you from the Ladner Leisure Center. Beautiful downtown Ladner. Hockey at its finest, Pacific this, International Junior Hockey League. This has been an exceptional game, back and forth. The, the shots are still quite quite far apart. They're not as far apart as they were, but the Flyers are still getting beaten in shots, and obviously the score is not reflecting that. Mazer shot, tees that up. Hart had that just deflect wide, shot out and down the ice. Icing is waved off by the lunge, one linesman. That's Tim Digby from North Delta. Picking that up behind the net. Stops, turns, back pass. Mazur has control of that. Going after that is Renford. Renford doing a good job. Fortune straight up the Fortuna. Fortuna gets rocked once again. Fortuna and Morishita are just getting worked over tonight. Big time. Mazur takes it behind the net. Coming up the right side. Looks. Erickson with him. All the way at center. Straight down across the line. Fuji in, going in. Fortuna shot. Tries to stack the pads to stop it. Save, turns around, couldn't find the puck. Oh, he couldn't find it, and he lost his stick. Picked it up at the best of times, right Two there. Two big saves, though. Two oh, big saves. playing well. 
Chung has control. Looked. Far side. Nice passing play straight up to Mazur. Cross to Nordy. Nordy packed to Tuberg. Into Nordy. Nordy gets caught with a hook undetected all the way out to the neutral ice area. And Carl Houston has control of it. Looks, lobs it back inside. Takes a bit of a bounce right on the doorstep. And Brendan Hart wisely holds on to that. Skate away, boys. You don't need foolish penalties right now. 3.15 left in this second period of play. I I have to say that I'm very impressed with uh, the way that the players are passing. The way they are passing is just incredible. They're they're doing an exceptional job. They're just so nice to watch. I hope the, the young kids here are, are taking the opportunity to watch how well these players are playing. Well, they're passing. It's heads up passing and very stick to stick, tape to tape at the best of time. Coming straight down across the line is Ross Sheard. It's off the puck. Hunt bumped him in front of that. Couldn't pick that one back up. Trying to work their way out of their zone. They're stopped by the aggressive forechecking for the Flyers. Turbert straight up the center inside the zone. Hansen lost the puck. Turbert has it. Gives it back out. Nice shot as Nordy had a golden chance. Oh, they're jamming the net. Get him away from your goaltender. Oh, definitely. He is just being a stand-up goaltender and just playing exceptional. He's already had 14 shots again this period. He's uh, he's seeing a lot of pucks tonight. Well, there you can see Macy Turberg is right there, number 18 for the Delta Ice Sox. I've been impressed with what this young man's brought to the team. Very aggressive, very skilled individual. Look at that. Hand-eye coordination, exceptional. Good move. Got the puck. Lobbed it straight up to Ryan Nordy. Nordy picked it up on a bounce on it, so he couldn't finish the shot. The other thing I'm really impressed with is how the Ice Hawks seem to always know where the other player is. They really play well together. The teamwork is exceptional. Heads up play. Back out. Shot deflected in front, and Dolter had a nice shot. Blocked in front, and if nobody was there, that would have been right on the doorstep. Dolter dumped it back in the corner. Eckford had control, lobbed it up to center ice, passed everybody. Icing is called. By the linesman, faceoff back down in the Flyers end zone. 221. All right, your coaching staff, what are you going to tell them, especially right now if you're uh, the North Delta Flyers coach? You happy with what's going on there? You can see what the coach, the head coach, we should say, Mr. Tim Keller. Assistant coaches are Daryl Erickson, Glenn Carrier, and Kenny Mills is the general manager. I think that Shane has to be happy with the performance of his team in the second period. They're playing a lot better, and they're really coming through with their shots. Ross misplayed that. Birch has it. Birch straight up, giving that up to RJ Horn. Horn goes in, tries to split the defense. Molnar picks that one up. Hall down. Molnar in control. Tries to center it back. Birch takes a shot. Blocked. A second chance, and that was blocked in front of the net. Out to center. Dumped it back in. Delay the offside. Good move by Jeff Orban to just dump it in and get some fresh legs back out. Orban still out playing defense. Oh, watch the red line, straight down. <laughs> nice back pass over. Ross has control. Ross comes in, get away, gets around Orban. Exceptional move. Over to team captain Richard Molnar. So Richard, dad is here, because you were talking to him earlier on tonight. Dick, Dick works for the Corporation of Delta. Straight down, across center. Nice passing play as they cut across the line. Shot off the net! Oh, and I think that was off his blocker as well because did Kevin Batchelor ever hammer that thing? Yeah, these shots. I oh. mean, I'm glad I'm not standing in there. There we can have a view of some of our fans and the two ladies in there, Mrs. Cooper and her daughter Kelly. We go way back knowing that course, family. Kelly is in the blue and Mrs. Cooper is wiping her forehead because she <laughs> is just a bundle of nerves right there. She gets so excited over these games oh, and yes. I can say she always did right from the time that, that I was playing and her son. Stevie. And uh, that's that community spirit and coming out and supporting your team. Ah, yes. Question is, is where's Wally? Where's Dad? Where's Wally? Delayed minor penalty coming up right now. Uh, we have a penalty indicated again by the referee. Well, the one thing when I had a chance to talk, I was talking to Kenny Mills the other day, and I know I've spoken to this about Shane Cuss, is the involvement with the minor hockey associations, be it North Delta Minor Association or South Delta Minor Hockey Association. They are so supportive of the junior clubs in their area. Which is nice to see. Do My question is, do the junior clubs go out and work with the kids in the area? Do yes. they work with the kids in the community? Yes, they do. 
And I think that, you know, off the ice, you've got to give them a lot of credit because the youth are our future. And if they can have these role models coming out and, and spending time with them, that means more to those kids than anything else. They do, and the parent team from the North Delta Flyers, the drawing team are the Surrey Eagles. And well, of course, the team, yes, <laughs> Mark Hollick is the head coach for the Surrey Eagles. And the coach, the Delta Icehawks. 11, Peter Ostrovsky. Here's the announcement. Two minutes for holding. Time of the penalty. The Delta Icehawks practice in Tilbury, as do the North That's Delta Flyers. Ostrovsky for holding. But when the Flyers, when the Icehawks rather practice at Tilbury, the Vancouver Giants practice there too. A goal right from the faceoff. Well, we knew we'd be entertained. Yes, and that is a power play goal. Two seconds into the penalty. So what now, are we now? The Ice Hawks are three for seven. Oh, this is Mr. Hunt, Garrett Hunt. Watch this. From the draw, Ross into Hunt. He's and the Hunt winger. He shoots it. He's the winger that came in and took the shot. Yeah, he, he got away from his man, so you've got to think that the flyer player is thinking, where did he go? Snuck in and managed to get the shot away. Well, I know the, that the goaltender would like that one back. The winger that was with him left him all alone. You can't leave the man wide open like that. Nice power play goal. Garrett Hunt with the assistant number two, Kyle Ross. Norty trying Turn to get the shot away. Goes off the crossbar. That's two they've had off the crossbar in the game tonight, and that going in. Houston the shot, tees that one up, trying to get that right on goal. Norty couldn't get that through traffic. Back out at the point, fighting for it against the board. Trying to pick it up is Dylan Toigo. Toigo seen limited ice time, but he's a little spark plug out there and playing with a lot of heart tonight. Looks, gets himself wide open. Trying to get it over to Norty. Norty failed to get it. Houston dumped it inside the zone. Norty for checking. Toigo playing center. Toigo comes over to take the puck off him. Shot it before he got there. Back down. Icing indicated. Called. Face off. Back in the North Delta Flyers end zone. 18 seconds left in net in this second period. And now we have a tie game. Ooh, you're the Flyers. <laughs> the Flyers went into the end of the first period up three to one. Now the end of the second period, it's a completely different game. You can see Shane, the coach for the Ice Hawks, he's got to be much happier with the performance of his team. And I don't know what to tell the Flyers. They're, they are trying, but they're getting outshot and outplayed. Simply, you got to tell them to keep skating. Don't quit skating because this team's an explosive machine. Straight down, going down the ice, cutting in towards the net is Redmond. Redmond trying to get control of that. Side step the check. Failed to get a good hit on that one. Dumped all the way out. Oh, they were home free. And we have a body check thrown against the boards over here, just below our broadcast location. PIJHL on DC TV from the Ladner Leisure Center. I'm Steve Erickson with the Net Labus. North Delta Flyers are three and the Delta Ice Hawks three after two periods of play. And then we are entertained. We talked about junior hockey. We talked about aggressive four checking. They're both doing it. They're playing strong. Obviously, the goaltending change for the Delta Ice Hawks worked in their favor. It seemed to uh, really get the team going and, and pump them up. Nobody really ever knows why, but it seemed <laughs> to work for them. And I'm sure it's it's nothing against their other goaltender. He played very well, but it did work, but they were out shooting them. They they took control of the game and started to completely out shoot the Flyers. The goaltender for the Flyers has made 32 saves wow. in two periods. That's, that's incredible. All right, quick question before we go to our interview that we uh, managed to do earlier on. If you're a coach for both teams, first the Flyers, what are you gonna tell the boys? Well, like you said, they have to keep skating. They've got to keep their heads in the game. Their goaltender is definitely keeping them in the game. He's doing his part. And that's my other pet peeve, I guess, as a goaltender, is get them out of my crease and get them out of my way so I can see the puck and make the save. Okay, well, I'll put you on the spot for Shane Cuss later on because I want to go to the interview that I had a chance to do earlier on with the general manager for the North Delta Flyers, Mr. Ken Mills. Going by Ken Mills, president and general manager for the North Delta Flyers. Kenny, a very successful season for the boys. Yeah, we're, uh, we're extremely pleased with the way things have gone, both on and off the ice. Well, I'm, I mean, from start to finish, from the product moving over from Queen's Park a year ago to going in Sun God, the changes that have made the team, the team has just seemed to go strong over the course of the season. Yeah, we, uh, we've really had some peaks and valleys. We've gone on some real solid streaks, and then we've had some losing streaks, but uh, they closed out the year the way you want to close out a year in regular season on a very positive note, and uh, 
and again off the ice in the same uh, the the fans built throughout the remaining month and a half of the season and uh, going into the playoffs uh, we uh, we feel very excited about what we've got together right now the start of the season when you first moved into Sun God is this where you expected to be have you reached the plateau or have you still got steps to take well, we, we most definitely wanted to uh, make the playoffs. That was uh, definitely a goal. And we, we honestly believe that uh, we, we need to see some playoff success to uh, take the team to where we think it would be, uh, be having taken the second step. Uh, and a uh, big win the other night is, is very important. And uh, we think moving on into the second round would definitely be where we expect to go. Let's talk about the affiliation with the Flyers and North Delta Minor Hockey Association. Oh, it's been fabulous. I, you know, it's. I think it's. Uh, it's been one of those things that we knew was a key to us moving into uh, Sun God was our need to have a strong minor hockey association that we could build a rapport with, uh, not only with the uh, fan base but also with the players in the midget and juvenile program. We've drawn on those players over the season. We've had uh, eight of the boys come up and play with us uh, on numerous occasions. Uh, again tonight, there's a player off the uh, midget A team, Dan Gurney, going to play with us who uh, has done extremely well uh, the juvenile team's been exceptional and uh, and then the fans and the volunteer base that we've been able to draw from North Delta has just has made this season the uh, the type of success we had hoped for and you did something new and unique that uh, not a lot of junior teams did and I think maybe you should expand on that about taking the boys down to General Motors place the other night well I, I had a bit of an opportunity and uh, I thought I could uh, build a little bit of uh, team spirit and uh, make it a little bit of a unique experience for the boys. I was able to get GM place for a few hours. Uh, we took them down, they had a little bit of the tour, got a chance to see the uh, Canucks weight room, the facilities there, and uh, then we went out on ice and did our team pictures on ice, and then uh, Tim and the boys had a practice, and uh, I think they thoroughly enjoyed the opportunity to, you know, play where the pros play. Well, I must say I commend you for doing that because I had a chance. I was actually on the website browsing around and surfing as everyone does nowadays. They've got pictures up. They're on the web. If you want to check it out, click on it and uh, go through some of them because it's very impressive. Kenny, good luck with the team, uh, not only in tonight's game, but uh, in the years in the future ahead. Well, thank you very much. And again, I, I'd really like to thank Delta Cable for uh, taking the time to uh, give us this opportunity. We, we really think that we benefit from the exposure in the community. And uh, we'd hope to see you guys out at a lot more games because I know that uh, we get great response back from it, and uh, we'd really love to see you guys do round three and uh, and on to the BCs. Okay, thanks, Ken. Thank you. Good words, good words from a general manager for the team. He's got to be pleased with uh, you know their overall season, but not so far in the game. No, no. Especially uh, second period. Yeah, second period was a little bit uh, shaky for them, but uh, like he says, it's going to be interesting. Didn't you say last time it was uh, yes. it was right to the end and nobody knew what was going to happen? Yeah. So I'm I'm curious to to see how this is going to shake okay, out. Okay, well, don't touch the dial. We got the third period action coming right up after this. Get some more coffee and come on back and join us live from the Ladner Leisure Center. Joined by Peter Zerbinas, referee in chief for the BC Amateur Hockey Association, product of North Delta. First off, Peter, uh, thank you for doing this, and we appreciate your time. Well, thanks for having me on, Steve. Now we know you're a busy man. Uh, first question I got to ask you: Did you ever expect you'd be referee in chief for the entire province of British Columbia? Not uh, too much pressure. Uh, no, actually, I didn't. We started off two years ago when I took on the uh, RCM position. Uh, and uh, the following year, the RIC position came uh, open with Willie Sari moving on to CHA, and I guess I kind of got elected by the, all the RCMs in the, the rest of the province, and here I am now. So enlighten us as to what your overall duties are with the province uh, and the duties that you have to do. Sure, I, I oversee the, uh, the entire province, whether it's junior hockey, minor hockey, uh, ensure that the rules are being enforced that we've come up through through CHA, and uh, Put out any little fires in in junior hockey and um, and even in minor hockey and basically supervise a lot of games. One thing I've noticed when I was referee in chief for Pacific Coast, it uh, sure curtails your amount of on ice time as a referee. Well, uh, funny you mention that because I haven't been on the ice refereeing a hockey game since February of last year, so not a lot of time to do that. Yeah, it sure uh, it just adds fuel to the fire if you're out there. More criticism from a lot of people, a lot of different areas. We get a lot of good people uh, from our area. I had a chance to talk to Andy Van Helmet a couple weeks back in Vancouver. Uh, very, very impressed with the talent level. We got a good core of not only instructors but uh, officials that we're putting through our program. Absolutely, we've um, 
The one thing I've had a chance to see is all the uh, really strong officials coming up through our program, not only on the main in the mainland, but uh, Vancouver Island, the interior. Uh, a great young group of officials that we've got coming up. It really uh, makes me happy to see that. And it seems that some of the leagues, uh, no criticism towards them, but some of the leagues seem that they want to get the younger officials now involved and have the senior officials or the older officials work as supervisors. Yeah, I think it's vital, though, that we have a, a good balance of officials. We can't just have the young guys coming in. You need the guys to mentor the young guys, bring them in slowly. So there's a key role for our, our senior officials. And obviously, we still want to make room for the younger guys to come through as a part of the development program. It'll just strengthen our program for the years ahead. The single most important rule that you've had to deal with this year as far as referee and chief, is there one particular rule more than others? Uh, probably abuse of officials. Um, sometimes we tend to uh, overcall that. Uh, whether it's a remark that a, that a player or a coach makes to an official, the official sometimes takes that personally. And I think we would tend to overcall that a little bit. Um, that would probably be the one thing that I would probably stress to uh, overall to the RCMs next year to get out at our clinics. Now the CHA are having their referee and chief meetings coming up in May in Calgary this That's year, right. May the 3rd to the 5th. See, I do my homework. That's right. So they're having the Very meetings impressed. in Calgary. Anything you're looking at, possible rule changes, clarifications? There's a few rule, uh, new rules coming out. Um, I'm not going to go over them right now, but there is about four or five key rules that will be changed next year. Um, that'll obviously be starting at the next year. Um, that'll be my first meeting, so I haven't really gone to one before. Uh, but um, yeah, there's about five new rules that'll be coming in next year. Now, I had a chance to ask Andy Van Hellen at this, and I'll ask you the same thing. Okay. Officials that are in the game just for the money. Andy Van Hellen told me one word, retire. Exactly. Just like a, a player that starts off in, uh, in minor hockey that starts playing just for the money, they're not going to go very far. you got to have the love for the game, and that goes the same with officiating. I think uh, you can't just be looking at it for the money. The money is good, helps some guys go through school while they're officiating, or that could be their part-time job, but you always got to have a love and a passion for this uh, officiating. Well, I know, Peter, you do an exceptional job. You're putting Delta, and we're very proud of you, putting Delta on the map as well as the rest of the province of BC. And of course, as anyone out there, if you're familiar with the papers and the writings for the BC Hockey Now, I write the officials' columns. If I need any rule clarifications, corrections, adjustments, this is the man I talk to. He's the one that uh, steers me in the right direction. So, uh, Peter, on behalf of David Banks and the BC Hockey Now, Delta Cable, we want to thank you for taking the time to do this because we know you're a busy man and we know uh, officiating, uh, always try, all we ever do is strive for consistency. It's a passion, Steve, and, uh, and you know that. I love do, doing what I'm doing and I love coaching the uh, younger officials and the senior officials, so it's great to be here. Okay, and you wish all the junior guys that are up doing the games because I know we've got guys in our area, for example, Pat Smith, one's come out of your area. They're going on to bigger and better things, working gold medal games, and that's, right. uh, that's got to be nice. Zenon Chichak's another one. Exactly. And, of course, a uh, young guy from Delta that we're very proud of, gone on to work. He's in his uh, about 16th year as a National Hockey League official, Mr. Brad Lazarowicz. Absolutely. Peter, again, thank you very much for your time, and uh, good luck with the rest of the season. Thanks a lot, Steve. Thanks for having me on. is in down drives forward people and parents today are facing a variety of challenging issues particularly with respect to drinking and driving alcohol and drug use the choices and decisions made regarding these issues carry with them significant impact I'm Constable Brooks with the Delta Police Department. Our department is committed to working together with youth and parents in our community to provide insight that will better equip our young people to make positive choices and provide parents with information and resources available. The Delta Police are hosting interactive forums for young people grades 7 to 12 and their parents, where we will take an in-depth look at the impact and effects of drinking and driving, road safety issues, alcohol and drug use. We will also inform parents on drug recognition and signs of drug use. Our department would like to take the opportunity to interact with parents and young people in the community to promote awareness, educate and inform you on the realities of the decisions we make. Our first forum will take place on March 11th at 7 p.m. 
at Siakum Secondary Theater. We'll be holding our next forum on May 27th at 7 p.m. at North Delta Secondary. You are welcome to attend the one closest to you or the date that is most convenient. Our goal is to reach the youth and parents of our community with information so everyone can be better informed of the realities of the choices and decisions that you make. We will also offer resources that are available to parents and young people. Everyone is invited. So we'll see you at Siakum Secondary Theater on March 11th at 7 p.m. If you think TV is getting boring, think again. With digital cable, you get a whole lot more. Order pay-per-view movies from the comfort of your home using your remote control. Order sporting events like Canucks Hockey or WWE. Order individual channels from our pick and pay service and only pay for the channels you want. Order multicultural channels for South Asian, Chinese and Greek programming. Find out more about digital cable. Give us a call at 946-7676. Here's a real treat for you music lovers, Max Tracks Digital Music. With digital cable you receive 40 channels of commercial free digital music from classical, jazz, rock, reggae, folk, baroque, blues and 33 more channels. The good news, these 40 music channels are all included with our digital cable service. For more details give us a call at 946-7676. You're watching DCTV, your eye on Delta. Welcome back to the Latin Leisure Center for PIJHL playoff action game number two. Tonight's matchup, the North Delta Flyers and the Delta Ice Hawks. North Delta Flyers leading by a score of three to one. Both teams serving minor penalties in that. But what a fast first period of play. Oh yeah, this has been an incredible, very enjoying game. Like the fans that are here, they're just, they don't even have time to cheer because it's been <laughs> so fast. I was just uh, listening to the interviews that you did with the coaches before the game and uh, heard some interesting notes. I've seen a lot of old faces down here that uh, I haven't seen in years. And they talked about how they got great community support in North Delta. And it's funny because I grew up in North Delta and played hockey there. And uh, I see a lot of faces that were there when I was playing. So how can you ask for better community support than, than having those come out? And my old coach's son is actually playing on one of the teams tonight. So your, it's, uh, old interesting. Co your old coach's son is actually the captain for North Delta, Richard Molnar. And Dick used to coach you. Second period just underway from the draw. It's dumped inside the zone. Welcome back to Live New Leisure Center. All of us set to start the third period of play. Score tied at three. And we just want to make mention right now that the uh, if you're interested in getting information on the hockey, the league, check out out. This is the BC Hockey Now, and you can get information on there. And I talked earlier on to Randy Parnell and Peter Zerbinas. You can go in there. There's columns on officiating sports, tournaments, whatever it might be. We're going to turn our attention to ice level right now, Annette, because they're all set to get underway for the third period of play. We'll turn out the big spotlight and let them drop the puck to start it. And we'll get it going because we are going to be entertained. Annette, it's tied at three. What, if any, is the overtime rule? Well, I just had it handed to me. If we are still tied at the end of this period, we will have a two-minute break. We will have four on four for five minutes. We will have a break. If we are continued to be tied, we will have an ice clean. 
and then we will play 20 minutes of five on five. Wow, that's different from the CHA rule overtime, but uh, we'll take it. Nothing wrong with that. Third period, as we mentioned, tied at three. The ice is really wet, so if you're going to make the pass, you better make it sharp and crisp and clear oh. because it's got to be tape to tape or it's not going <laughs> to go. It's so slow and wet. Scored! Yes, the North Delta Flyers come out and scored the goal. Well, that Clear is going shot. to be a huge goal. Well, we, Jason McClellahan had no chance on that. And that's what we were talking about, how the game can turn and the ice is so wet. The ice actually affected a couple of passes that the Ice Hawks made going up in their zone. Oh, definitely. And you know, the first one, I don't know how the first shot didn't go in. McClellahan got lucky. Got the pads together and managed to turn to the outside and the puck went wide. I really thought that one was going to go in. Well, I believe that was Tyler Eckford that scored that goal. From the draw, it's dumped in the corner. Scores! Right down between his feet, almost on the goal line. Oh. The Ice Hawks were paying attention and got right on top of it. Well, that's what we talk wow. about awareness. <laughs> wow. Ah, it's amazing. What do you say more than that, eh? Oh. We go from one end to the other. Seven What's seconds. Seven seconds apart. Seven seconds. Oh, this is absolutely unbelievable. 4-4, 4 19 left, third period of play from the draw. Kyle Ross comes down across the line. Over to Morishita. Here's the announcement of the goal. The first goal. As long as they don't score again. Good, we got a whistle. So that's the Flyers goal. Molnar and Forehan. Yep. No, Orban, sorry. Molnar and Orban. Here's the Ice Hawks goal getting set. Kyle Ross scored the goal. Hunt misplayed that, picked back up by the Delta Flyers, dumping it all the way back inside the zone. That was Tyler Eckford. Four checking tenaciously are the Flyers. Shot off the boards, not out. It hit the referee's shin pad, stayed inside the zone. Good, solid body check right there, going in. Does he haul him down? Oh, he carries him away, but he holds on his stick anyway. Two of them mix it up in front of the net. Referee says, let's go, boys, keep on going. Dumped it inside the zone. Kyle Ross gives the puck straight over. Shot, stop, oh, deflected in the corner. Kyle Ross is going after that one, and Wacon had an exceptional opportunity. Fighting for it, trying to get the puck loose. Ross tries a centering pass, lost it in his feet, going on the far side. Dan Gurney shot it, but not out. Tees it up from the point, deflected wide, and that was Dolter. Good chance, and they're trading shots and goals. 18.01 left in this third period of play. Coming to you from the Latin Leisure Center. A couple players mix it up with each other. Eckford mixing it up with Kyle Ross. Coaching staff for the Delta Flyers and the Delta Ice Hawks. Trying to get his team to settle down, I think, a little bit. The Flyers coach, make sure that they stay focused on the game. You don't want to be taking stupid penalties at this point. No, you can ill afford them at this stage in the game, especially tied at four. From the draw, Toigo has control. Toigo fighting for it against the board, trying to kick it loose, finally does. As Toigo give it out to Turberg, centering it out, still in control. Turberg has it. Toigo going to the front of the net. Nobody gave him the puck. He was wide open. Turberg stays with his man. Toigo comes in, forechecking, tried to take his man off the puck. He was run a pick play on and taken off the puck. Straight across, Birch has control. Birch, back pass, undetected. We have a penalty in front of that. This one's going to the Ice Hawks for interference. I think it's going to Stephen Gillis, number five. That would be the only infraction that I saw out there, and yet he's going to the penalty box. Get a line change right now. We talk about the youth movement and the future of the world. I always tell everybody the youth are the future of the world. There's an event coming up in the Delta area that we want to make mention about, and that yeah, the Delta Police are sponsoring a Delta Youth on a Mission, Making Choices to Live By. The Delta Police Department is hosting interactive forums on the tough issues and choices facing youth and parents today. This, youth, this forum is going to include topics such as drinking and driving and road safety, which of course we all know is a huge issue, drugs, alcohol, recognition and effects. These are all very important topics and if you get the chance, 
send your kids. 50-50 ticket, and we're going to give you the address, the website, and you can, the numbers you can contact. Get a hold of that, and Delta Cable will be there to keep you abreast of all the happenings in the community. Houston has control, dumped it in. The delayed offside is nullified. Houston dumps and clears out of the zone. Lee Rogers has the puck beside the net. Cross ice pass as he gives it over to Tyler Chung. Chung down the left side, straight in, shot out of their own zone. Houston lobs it all the way down in the zone, and Brendan Hart comes out of the net to stop that one. Interference. I bet Time of the penalty at two. I bet Matt three, Google, the goal zero. for the Flyers, would love to be in this game. A spare goaltender, but you can only play one tonight. Straight up the center. Nice shot. Tyler Eckford shot that down. I'm gonna have to talk to Malcolm and we're gonna get Malcolm a helmet for the next game we do. I'm worried <laughs> he's gonna get pegged off in the penalty box, poor guy. North Delta four, the Delta Ice Hawks four. Third period of play. DC TV Sports. Proud to present this to you. Called for the two-line pass. I'm Steve Erickson, joined by Annette Labus and the rest of our ace Delta Cable sports crew bringing you this telecast. We were Game just, number two. We were just talking about teens and the, and the forum that the Delta Police are going to be sponsoring. Um, the, this is a target group. The target group they're looking at is students in grades 7 to 12 and their parents. You have to be involved in your child's life. It's so important. And, you know, we really see that here with the parents that are coming out and supporting their kids that are playing. We were just uh, watching the spare goaltender for the Flyers making a save on the bench there as the puck was coming over. <laughs> yeah, Matt tried to stop that, but he didn't have a lucky move there. And this is also working in conjunction with the Delta Council. Uh, Krista England and Robert Campbell were the two individuals, uh, Delta Council members that give me this pamphlet and ask me if I uh, make mention of it. So. On behalf of Delta Council, we want to have you get out to that special event. And again, Delta Cable will be there to cover all the major concerns of the area. Flyers all the way up the center. Spinorama move. Nice move as Jeff Orban sidestepped the check. Kept inside the zone. Erickson dumped it all the way out the neutral ice area. Down. Jeff Orban goes back in his own zone to pick that one up. They expected a call, but there's no call on that. Ten seconds left of trying to get his attention so he knows when to come back on the ice, but he's not paying attention to the penalty box. That's Gillis they're hollering at. Finally, Gillis said, okay, I can see. I know what you're doing. Taking it behind the net. Erickson bumps his man off the puck. Penalty is expired. Team's back at full strength. In control. Shot it off the boards. Tuber trying to go after that one. Tuber failed to get control of that. Bit of a rub out on the boards. R.J. Horn got knocked off the puck. R.J. Horn clears his own to get back on side. So does Richard Molnar, the team captain for the North Delta Flyers. Shot all the way up, down, inside the Flyers end zone. 15 minutes left in this third period of play. Careful move. Effort across the line. Going down the left side, shot wider than that. Far side, picked up by McNeely. McNeely, back to Edford, shot! Stopped by Thiessen. Thiessen's played strong. Oh, pardon me, that's McClellahan. Sorry, Jason, I don't want Jason to get mad at me. Jason's a good kid. So is Brad, so as far as that goes, they all are. Cross ice pass. Looking away on goal, Hunt coming down the left side, shot wide of the net. Hunt couldn't pick that one up. Kevin Batchelor was going after the rebound. Lock back in, delayed offside. Nullified, they all cleared the zone. Garrett Hunt goes in, takes his man off the puck. Batchelor gets rocked in the corner by Sheard. Batchelor fighting for it with Hunt. Two of them mix it up. Eckford comes in to hold the puck, trying to get a stop at the play. Solid hit thrown right there by Dolter. Straight down. Hansen shot on net. Wide of the target, though. Just pulled it at the last minute. Looked up when he was going to shoot. Delta Flyers having a line change. Houston gets rocked. Oh, did Houston ever get rocked? The puck goes up and out of play. And Bachelor come in and just leveled it. Kevin ever hammer him. Nice hit, Kevin. That was good. I think we need to tell our Whoa. fans they better come out and watch game three because the intensity of game two. <laughs> Boy, game three is going to be pretty exciting. Well, never mind just three, three, four, five, and the rest. And we have a little bit of a delay. The referee is over talking to Mr. Shane Cuss about a situation. You notice in that how the glass is low here? Well, I shouldn't say low. It's not low like some rinks. The glass is fairly high. It's about four feet high on the sideboards here. Sun God at the new complex they built there and expanded it and all that stuff. The glass on the sides is six feet high. The ends is 10 feet high. 
I'm going to get back to a situation that's going on in the South Surrey Arena because there's a lot of concern in that area about people that have got hit by pucks. Penalty being called by the referee, and it's going against Lee Rogers, probably for holding. Anyway, if you've ever been to the South Surrey Arena, the first row of the spectators is level. It's level with the row of the glass on the side. Let's take a look at the replay on this. Literally, tackle. Does he tackle him? Sure, he yeah, you just caught the tail keep end of it, but he tackled him. There it is there, you can see the aftermath. <laughs> But the, the seats are level with the glass. The puck has been shot from the zone out of the area and it's pegged off. In one game, three spectators. A lady got cut with 22 stitches. A young eight-year-old girl got hit with the puck. And apparently there's a movement in South Surrey for him to change the glass. Scramble in front of the net. Hunt mixes it up. Kyle Ross comes in and offers some words of wisdom out there, obviously. To Ostrowski, not going to listen, but offered some words of wisdom <laughs> anyway. You can see the Richard glass Mola. has always been an interesting issue because you you just you get people at the game, especially in a warm up, where they they just can't pay attention. And there again, you can see on our screen the standings and the difference in the standings between these two teams in the regular season. But look how close they are. Richmond 40, North Delta 40. Then you've got Delta Isox 53, Rich Meadows 55, and the Abbotsford Pilots 56. So there's a lot of parity in the league, with the exception of Port Grandview. And they're working to strive to uh, better their product all the time anyway. Kyle Ross dumped it back in the corner to Morishita. Kyle Ross gives it off to Hunt, back out to Kyle Ross. Ross looks back out of the point. Mazur couldn't keep that one in. Dumped it back out to the center ice area. Nice passing plays against the Waycott. Waycott's had an actually good game for the uh, Delta Ice Hawks tonight. Yeah, he's been playing very well. Good solid. We got a game. penalty coming up to Brandon Morishita behind the play. It's a slashing penalty. The play was leaving the zone. Morishita thought it would be undetected. He looked at him and slashed Trevor Hansen, number three of the Delta Flyers, behind the legs and referee Chris Hahn made the call. And That's awareness. That was a good it. call. That was a good call. And he didn't argue it, so he knows he did it, and he knows he was caught. It no, takes a was, lot for the call. official to be able to watch the game and then call what's behind the play. That's always the important part, is the little chippy stuff behind the play. All right, so 52 yeah, seconds. For slashing. Time of the penalty at 7.22. Left the minor to the Flyers. Flashing. And a minute and 50 left for the Ice Hawks. Straight in, nice move. Fortuna scores! Fortuna puts it low. Stick side, and they take the lead 5-4. to four. Even strength goal because both teams are playing even. Wow. While we talk this about power, watch this. Erickson passed it over to Fortuna. Danny, Takes low. his time, the control. In, that's almost like a Bertuzian goal. Yeah, that was nice. Now, this is the first time this game that the Ice Hawks have had the lead. So I'm interested to see how this is going to play out with them finally having the lead in the game. Well, it is, but that was a nice pass. That's what we called setting it up from a veteran. Erickson was the one that set that up. And taking his time. Did he ever? Didn't rush it. No, that was a nice play because, like I say, I've seen Bertuzzi score goals like that sitting on his tush, too. Did a good job. <laughs> that was this sheer perseverance. Heads up. Another puck up and out of play. Where's your goalie glove when we need yeah, it, Yeah, I think Come we on. need it. That, that young girl, Get I'm going to give it to her down there. She just about wore it. I don't know. She's pretty agile. She moved fairly quick, boy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, That's you all can four see that have come out our side. Shane's finally got a smile on his face. Talking to his team, he did have a little bit of a smile down there. He's got to have a little bit of relief right now. <laughs> Straight in from the draw, shot just wider than it. McClellan made the nice stop, deflected that Number one nine. wide. Danny, the tuna man for tuna. <laughs> With the assist of number Everybody's 21, got a Tyler Erickson. Oh, poke check! Again, McClellan! What a beautiful poke check! Oh, I think he's hurt. Oh, I hope not. He's a nice goaltender. We don't want him hurt. Pucks out of the way. Straight in. Going in. Ice Hawks having a line change. Straight on. Oh, what a line change. They're shorthanded for a minute now. They're killing this penalty. The Delta Flyers are on a power play. 
Houston across the center line. Long shot. Hart deflects that in the corner. Ross takes his man off the puck. It shot up off the glass. Delayed offside. They clear the zone to have it nullified. I hope the NHL puts that rule back in because I like it. Yes. Keeps the game going. If the Flyers need their special team to come through, it's now. Indeed. Trevor Hansen give it straight over to Eckford. Eckford dumped it in the corner. Molnar going in to chop that one loose. Houston give it over to Erickson. Shot it off the boards on the far side. Out to Chung. Chung at center to Eckford. Eckford coming out across the line. He's got Birch. Molnar with him. Still in control. Eckford lost the puck. Birch straight out. Chung shot deflected in net. Oh, that hit him. It looked like it hit him on the side of the net. Goaltender lost his stick, picked back up. Playing with his player stick now. That's right. That's okay. Houston Now he's lost it. them both. Now we've got a penalty coming up right now. Indicated by the referee. I think we've got a couple of them. I see him indicating a holding, a holding. signal. I'm not sure who's getting it. Good tempo, but boy, did it ever slow down. There you can see number 21, hey, RJ let's, Horn. Let's have a look. We've got a couple of them going, I think. Maybe holding each, Houston and R.J. Horn. The, uh, it was interesting, you know, very often the goalie loses his stick. His defenseman was smart enough and, and caught on right away to give him his stick, but then he lost that one too, so he didn't have anything to play with. He wasn't sure. <laughs> but he was in there making the saves when he needed to. Jason wasn't sure what stick he was supposed to use, but he stayed in net like he was supposed to. <laughs> Team's back at full strength right now. Coincidental minors in the penalty box being served. Toygo across the center line, dumps it in the corner. Trying to fight that off is Turbert. Now into number 22 in the Dill Dice off, Carl Houston. Time of the penalties at 9.26. Rogers and Mazur mix it up in the corner. Redmond comes in to fight the puck and try to kick the puck loose. Ross Sheard also comes in. Stoppage of play, referee says, that's it. Hold on, boys, we got a bit of a stoppage. Just want to take this opportunity then on behalf of ourselves and Delta Cable Television to congratulate the Vancouver Giants in their second year of existence for securing their first ever playoff berth. Of course, the Vancouver Giants are pleased to announce it's their second year in the franchise, and they currently have got a record of 26, 32, 4, and 3, 59 points. And they're sitting in fourth place as we have a foot race. Turbo shot wide of the net. He's hauled down. Deflected in front of the net. Good stop by Hart. Flyers straight down, cross the line. Ross Sheard, but they go offside. Offside call. The Flyers were going, and were they ever flying? But they were just a little bit ahead of where they wanted to go. First general manager getting back to the Vancouver Giants. General manager Scott Bonner says that the club's progress this season, anytime you can double your total points from the season before, you're doing something right. Congratulations to Scott Bonner, Mr. Ron Torgo, and everyone involved with the Vancouver Giants organization. Very, very successful season, and what a professional hockey club. Hunt gets leveled on the far he side. He ever get rocked. Out. The fans like that. Trevor Hunt takes a long shot from the point. Going back in. Fighting for it. They got to get it loose? Yes, they finally got it loose. Trevor had two opportunities to shoot it. Erickson shot it high and wide over top of the net. Shot out of the zone, all the way out and down the ice. Icing called, automatic icing, and Erickson and McNeely were going after that. The fans got a little excited on that last hit. It was oh, a good did. solid hit. I just, uh, I'm just glad nobody gets hurt. <laughs> they did. You talk about getting hurt. So the Canucks have got a few injuries we should make mention of. Dan Cucci is not going to make the road trip. Bertuzzi's on the road trip. Don't know whether he's going to be playing. What about Olin's Olin? staying home. Yep. Olin's not making the trip. And Chubarov is also staying home with an abdominal strain. So they're missing a few people. Going to be curious to see how Tyler Moss will do if he's called up to play on, as they called him up from the Manitoba Moose. Inside the zone, fighting for it, trying to kick the puck loose. Shot out in the far side. Going after that is Waycott. Waycott just dumped it in the corner. Kyle Ross has control. Ross lost it. Mulma picks that up for the North Delta Flyers. Mulma coming down across the left side. Dumping it back inside. Good sprawling move to get that away from Ostrovsky. Mulma pushes with Hunt. 
Two of them bang against the boards. Muller tries to take the puck off one. Getting away from Ostrowski, comes back to do a good job back checking. Hunt waiting in the point, trying to get it loose to kick that back down to anybody. Wicott, wide open, picked up by Muller in front of his own net. Cutting straight down the middle. Muller going down the left side. Birch has control. Birch, long shot on goal. Muller gets rocked in front of him. I look over and I see Dick on the far side cringing. Shot, deflected, stopped in front by Jason McClellahan. Traffic all over the ice in front of the net. Shot out, down the ice. Deflected. Icing is waved off by the linesman. Phil Roberts was the linesman that waved that off. Tim Dickby, the other linesman. Chris Hahn, the referee. Coming down, across the line, trying to get past everybody. Redmond, one extra move, misplayed the puck. Called for the offside pass or the two-line pass. That's where they should eliminate it. Boy, we never open the game up. Oh, yeah, it makes the game go so much faster. I'd rather see that than the hurry-up face-offs. <laughs> <laughs> Shane Cuss, head coach for the Delta Ice Hawks, and I talked about the fact that little Scotty Gomez playing with the New Jersey Devils is still doing well up there. And, of course, one, at one point, Scotty Gomez, his line mate, was Alex McGillney. Up to center, across the line. Fortuna has the puck as he scored the last goal for the Delta Ice Hawks to give him the lead. Back out to center. Gillis goes back inside his own zone to pick that one up. Fuzzy waiting for it up to Fortuna. Fortuna dropped it off the right side board, taking it behind the net. Hunt gets hauled down undetected. A little bit of a dive action on that play as well. Get up, play keeps right on going. Oh, he's holding on. Play carries right on. I think he's hurt. I think he's hurt. I don't think so. No, no, no. He's, he's holding the stick. Oh, here we go oh, down at this end, and nobody sees it. Shoving. The officials don't know where it. to go. Now we've got one linesman at one end <laughs> and one linesman at the other end. Now I've seen you get knocked out doing that. <laughs> no, I was too little, but I know it happened. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did. I want to see who's getting the penalty. Well, you got to wonder if there's a holding the stick penalty. Now let's listen, let's listen, let's listen. I think Hunt's going as well. Yeah, they're both going. Let's have a look back yeah, behind the net again. See, I was concerned he was hurt because of the way he was laying there. I knew he wasn't letting go of the stick. He didn't want to move. Definitely playing possum. And then after the whistle goes, then you can see him say, oh, yeah, I'm fine, and throw the stick away. So, you know. Hunt's in the penalty box, number 24, Garrett Hunt. Not a popular man tonight. No, they've been taking their liberties out of it, and if you think it's eager in game number two, wait until you see games three, four, five, and six, and seven. Nick mentioned that the owner and governor for the North Delta Flyers is Mr. Alec Tidy. Special hello to Alec, a good, good friend. I had a chance to talk to him in several different times over the course of the season. Very, very knowledgeable gentleman in the game of hockey. Straight down, Molnar reaches for pull. That pulls that one onside. Gillis takes Molnar off the puck. Fortuna has it in the corner. Near side boards. Fuzzy has it. Dumps it all the way out to center. Delayed offside. Nullified. Fuzzy brings it out to center. Molnar. Oh, lobs it back inside. Going in right in the north step. RJ Horst. Oh, shot out. out of the air. No. Erickson pulled that out of the air. Oh. No. Is the net off or what? I'm not sure why the whistle went. Nor am I. I want to see. The net is fine. It was wide open. Well, I know there's a discussion. I'm not sure what the referee is calling or what he's making a call on. There you can see Chris Hahn in the corner. Now I'm probably, curious. He would probably love to have that whistle back, but it wasn't going to happen. I don't know what the call is. I don't know if we are going to know. Well, we'll maybe find out. I'm not really sure right now. Oh, well, going to the far side. He must have lost sight of the puck. He must have, clearly. That's the only thing I can chalk it up to, and that is that he must have lost sight that of the puck. That was a potential goal waiting to happen for the Flyers. The net was wide open. The well, defenseman had the puck. I see Timmy on the far side leaning against the board very reluctantly. He doesn't want to criticize anybody. Say, yeah. He's played, played in the fifth and acting like Mr. Mark Crawford for the Vancouver Canucks right now. Good move. Toyo comes down on the right side. Shot! Oh, deflected in the corner by Hart. Nice stop. What a nice shot by Torgo. Right on the side of the net. 
Good move for the coach to put that one. Shot up over top of the net. Not going to play that one back. Mixing it up, a lot of traffic in front of the net. Houston's playing strong with Mazur. Defensive pairing is very exceptional. Straight down. Cross the line, coming in. Ostrovsky cuts it back inside. Getting it to Birch. Now we have a penalty call. Call it for a hook. I think this one's going to be going to Ryan Nordy. Six minutes left. The Flyers are down a goal, and now they're going to go on the power play. Uh, we'll have see. Look. All right, let's take a look at it. You be the referee. You play the call. Here's Nordy. He's going to come in, wrap his stick around, and take him down. Well, it wasn't Nordy after all. It was Dylan no? Toygo that they ended up oh, okay. picking up on. He's the one that's uh, being called for the penalty. I didn't know why uh, Ryan was so upset about the call. I mean, other than the fact that they were getting the call in the first place. Jason McCullaghan goes around, spins around like a pretzel to spin himself and hold on that one. Nice move. Well, Jason, we talk about the young goaltender. Jason has played very strong to come in and give the team a lot of support with, uh, you know, coming back, considering they were down, and that's no slight mention to Brad Thiessen because Thiessen played very strong. Yeah. Shot, but not up. Here's the announcement. Two minutes for hooking. Time with a penalty at 13.59. Dylan Toyo for, for hooking at hooking. 13.59. Erickson takes his man off the puck, centering pass, back out on the doorstep, trying to get control of that once again was Chung. Chung takes it, just leisurely behind the net. Centering pass, shot. No, the light went on. Didn't go in the net, though. But the light was on yeah. prematurely as Redmond tried to shoot that right underneath the goaltender. Back up, stops, spins around as Ross Shear. Shear gets level at the board by Erickson. Erickson playing very strong, very aggressive defensively. I like what that guy brings to the game. Besides that, I like his name. Nope. <laughs> I wonder why. Five. Minutes left, third period of play, 5-4 in favor of the North, pardon me, the Delta Icehawks over the North Delta Flyers. Yeah, they could tie this series up if they can hold on to this lead. Well, I think the Flyers, uh, despite the fact they'd love to go out of here with a victory, they'd probably be happy with a split coming into the uh, Delta Icehawks home rink. Taking their time to work it. Cross ice pass. Nice play as they give it up to Birch. Mazur puts a bit of a hook undetected on Birch. Houston tries to take him off the puck, centering it back. Birch goes after that, trying to pick it up. Couldn't get a hold of it. Mulna right in the doorstep. Knocked out the neutral ice area. Knocked down with a glove. Whistle called for a glove hand pass. Now we're going to have a couple of players come out of the penalty box. 20, 20 seconds left in the power play now. The Flyers have a faceoff just outside in the neutral zone. And they really need to get their power play together and, and make something happen. Well, Hunt is coming out of the penalty box, as did Ryan McNeely, the two players that were caught behind the play, deep inside the Delta Flyers end zone. Bit of a hook, stutter step, going back. Morishita fell down. Nice move, get around Kyle Ross. Cross ice pass, all the way up. Chung, drop pass, shot. And what a shot by Shear that it was blocked at the last minute. Inside, Ostrowski just lobbed it off the back glass. Dolter shot it, not out. Back to McClellahan. McClellahan left that behind the net. Dolter shot it, again kept inside the point by Hansen. Hansen just lobs it back in. Erickson knocks it down. Back to Hansen at the point. It's in his skate. Toyo kicks it back out to center. Straight down is Kyle Ross. He's alone. Nobody's with him. Shoots it in the corner. Turns. Goes off on a line change. Fortuna. Ross. Dolter going off on a line change. Hunts out. As is Waycott. Now Waycott's changed his mind. Go off on a line change. Hunt comes back out on the ice. Momar's on the ice for the Flyers. Cross ice as he gives it over to Redmond. Redmond down the right side. Jump inside. Fuji. Misplayed that. Goes back. Finally picks it up at center. Fortuna with him. Shot wide of the net. Danny Fortuna, the little spark plug, had it just go past him in the corner. Again, we have to make mention that he was the one that scored the go-ahead goal for the Delta Icehawks in this third period of play. Shot off the glass after it was deflected off Mulnar's stick at center. 
Back down inside their own zone. R.J. Horn, cross ice pass. Fuji tried to take his man off the puck. Finally, Fuji gets the puck. Back inside to R.J. Horn. Horn passes it back over to Mulner. Mulner comes down across the line. Sports goal the line, as does R.J. Horn. Right on the Callahan, and Jason holds on that wisely to try to move Birch out of the way. You have to make mention again that Birch was up earlier this year playing with the Coquitlam Express in the BC Hockey League, a team owned by, in part, by Darcy Rhoda, ex-Vancouver Canuck. Speaking of Vancouver Canucks, I have to take time right now to make mention that the BC Hockey Hall of Fame welcomes five new inductees, two former members of the Vancouver Canucks. The official ceremony will be held in Penticton July the 25th. They are going to be, and I will tell you, next stop at your play. In fact, we'll keep you posted. So don't change the dial or you'll miss out on that important information about the BC Hockey Hall of Fame. Taking it behind the net. McClellan comes out of his net, gets pulled over. Now, this should be interesting. <laughs> I'd like to see a replay on that. He's going to call a holding against the Ice Hawks, which I believe is the right call because I think that the Flyers player was pushed into the goaltender. But it looks Let's like they're both look. going. It looks like they're both going. So there you can see he's being pushed in closer to the goaltender and then saying, I didn't do it. But they're calling it. Goaltender interference, and they're calling it holding. So now we're coincidental. There's two minutes left. I don't know why uh, we have a face-off outside. It should be inside the corner. It should be inside the zone because... The referee's saying outside. Well, you know what they're saying. What they're saying is that the Flyers player caused the stoppage of play. No, what no? they're saying is there was a gathering rule as well. Okay. I didn't see it that way, but I'm not the ref, but I'll give Chris that one. I mean, the linesman made that call, not Chris. Inside the corner, shot it, but not out against the boards, fighting for it, trying to kick it loose. Houston playing on defense with Erickson. What a strong tag team that is. Straight up, Kyle Ross going on the far side. His chin strap come undone, so he went off on a line change. Icing. Icing call. Face out back in the Ice Hawks end zone. Now, we'll get back to the players or the people that are going to be inducted into the DC Hockey Hall of Fame. They will be Doug Lidster, Darcy Rhoda, and those are two of them. Amongst the 2003 inductees, Burt Marshall is going to be another one. General manager for the Detroit Red Wings, Mr. Ken Holland, and longtime hockey personality now living in Parksville, Mr. Howie Meeker. Those are the five people that will be inducted into the BC Hockey Hall of Fame July 25th in Penticton. Tell you another event in the Lower Mainland on July 25th starting. I won't tell you what it is, but you should rev your motors and think about getting tickets for it. Back inside the corner on the far side, Sheard has control. Erickson stole that from Sheard, shot against the boards, up and out of play. And front live from the Ladner Leisure Center in Delta, British Columbia. You can see on your screen the Delta Ice Hawks are leading the North Delta Flyers by a score of 5-4. to four. We have a minute and 30 seconds left in the third period of this PIJHL hockey. Pacific International Junior Hockey League. Hockey action at its best. First round. Both Delta teams fighting to go on to round number two. Who are you vying for? Tie game! What a goal! What a goal! That let's was a Brandon Morrison goal. <laughs> oh, let's bring life to the building right now, baby! Oh boy! That was a fantastic goal and a very good example oh. of not letting your man go. I don't blame McClenahan at all. Let's pick it up from the draw and at watch. He's got it on the point. Excellent control to take his time and look for the pass. And again, we've talked about it all night. The players are being left alone for the goaltender to deal with, and you can't do that. How do you spell happy? It's spelled O-R-B-A-N. Jeff Orban was the one that scored that goal from the draw. Molnar had it, but he lost control of it when he went across the blue line and put himself offside. And here oh, I was thinking we were getting number close. 77, <laughs> Jeff Orban. Well, they always say you have to stay driving and digging deep to the net, and that's what you have to do. From the draw, Morris 
Yoshida that goes inside the zone. We have an offside call, and Kyle Ross is offside. Well, another event that's coming up July the 25th downtown in Vancouver. Downtown in Vancouver will be the Molson Indy. That's a very popular Starting event. July 25th. Yeah, I always worry. We lost the ACC, the Air Canada Championship. There's young Jason McClellan. Is the Indy going to stay or is it going to go? I hope it stays. I enjoy it. I really enjoy going down and having a chance to cover it for all our sporting fanatics in the Delta area. Please add number 15, Tyler Eckford. Assist on and that. Tyler Eckford's getting an assist. Horn. We can see Mr. Shane Cuss on the bench on the far side. He's not a happy camper right now. He's, it seems they've been playing catch up all game, Annette. Yeah, they had their one and only lead for quite a while, actually. Yeah, and they did. now you can see that we're tied 5 all with a minute to go in the third period. Last minute of play in the third period right now. Flyers down, up to center, straight over on the far side to Rogers. Rogers dumps it in. Molnar going in the corner, trying to fight for that and kick that one loose. Molnar passed that one straight out to Redmond. Taking it behind the net, Erickson couldn't get it out. Finally, it just bounced off of Orvin's skate on the far side. Coming out of the net to stop that is Hart. Smart, wise move. Lobs it all the way out to center. Straight up, Redmond has it. Redmond in control, good move as he jumps around one man and Houston hauls him down. Smart back checking by Carl Houston and very impressed with him. Offside, oh, tough play. <laughs> he Brandon, tried very hard. <laughs> young Morishita almost pulled his groin staying onside on that yes. one. But too bad, Brandon, you did a great, great job and a valiant effort for trying. You know, I talked about the BC Hockey Hall of Fame and the inductees, about Doug Lidster. Doug Lidster's sister is actually a school teacher up in the Kamloops area. And Jim Christensen, who used to be an official in the NHL, his sister used to be a teacher at the school you went to just on 82nd. That sounds. Yes. High shot, but it was deflected. It was up and out of play. Referee blows the whistle to say, nope, we're not going to do that. We're going to stay, stay here and do it all again. Now we've got 21 seconds left, and we talked to you earlier about the overtime. If we continue to stay tied for the next 21 seconds, we're going to have a two-minute break. We will play five minutes of four-on-four -four hockey. If we are still tied, we will have an ice clean. And then we will play five on five for 20 minutes. Okay, let's see what happens from the draw all the way back down, right on goal. McClanahan makes the big stop. Boozy has it, dumps it, not out, kept in by Orban. Back inside, over to Hunt. Hunt, cross ice pass up the Mazer, couldn't get it to him. Kept in the hole once again by Stred. Shared, lost it, lobbed it all the way out the center. Clock's ticking down, buzzer goes. The third period's over. It's tied at five. We're going overtime. I honestly didn't think we were going to, but uh, I've been proven wrong. <laughs> no kidding. What a period of play. The shots this period were definitely down. The, it was more neutral zone play. The shots this time, the Flyers actually outshot the Hawks in this period by eight to five. So the goaltenders didn't have as much work this time, but they came up strong when they needed to. There was a few more goals this period. So of course I don't count those because I count <laughs> saves. So, you know, the goaltenders came up when they needed to, but the, the goals were happening, so. You can tell she's been coached by John Garrett. What can I say? Yeah, she pleads the fifth. She does very well on that. <laughs> but let's talk about goals. They swapped goals seven seconds apart early in the third period. And that neither team quit. They just kept driving and driving. Sure, they each made a couple of foolish mistakes. Coaching staff's going to talk to them. But boy, we're going to be entertained for overtime. Oh, yeah, definitely. You could see that um, the, the Flyers really got going when they got that first goal right away in the period. I think it was like 20 seconds in. And they were really pumped. And I thought that that was really going to be a determining factor in the game and seven seconds later the ice hawks responded that really took the wind out of the sails of the flyers but they managed to battle back right down to the bitter end and tied the game it was very exciting See, that's very strange because normally when you score a goal the way orban did in that case that motivates the team the other team's a little bit deflated in this case the other team, which was the Delta Ice Hawks, they weren't deflated at all. They just come out, kept jumping and driving, and the puck went down. It was right in Hart's feet, and he couldn't find it. And uh, tough, tough break for the young man because both goaltenders, in fact, all three goaltenders we've seen tonight <laughs> have played very, very entertaining and exceptional hockey. Oh, yeah, it's it's been very entertaining. The fans here are getting into the game. The longer the game goes, the more excited the fans are getting, and, and the players are really putting on a great show tonight. I have to give credit to all of them. Well, we are indeed being entertained, and uh, this is only game number two. 
They will play game three on March the 1st, and we don't want to date it too much because by the time this airs, which will be March the 2nd, they will already be in game four. Regardless, you're being entertained, and Delta Cable is very pleased to be here and bring this broadcast to you. Hope you enjoy it. Special hello to everyone that couldn't get out to the different facilities to watch the game. And because I think, these are the stars of the moral. And I think we should thank all of our volunteers that work with us at Delta Cable to make this possible. Well, without the volunteers, they wouldn't make me look and sound nice. <laughs> they just keep bringing me makeup and lots of coffee. Pucks dumped inside the zone. We've started it. Now, don't forget, we're playing four on four. This is the same rule that the NHL uses right now. For five minutes. For five minutes. Then we have a bit of a timeout, coffee break, but we're going to see what happens. Kyle Ross fights for it, goes in the corner. Molnar's out there. He's logged a lot of ice time tonight. So has Ross. Ross knocks it down. Morris Sheet is on the ice with Ross. We've got all the workhorses out there. Yes, we certainly oh. do. I was just going to say, Morris he's played a, a heck of a game, too. He's been out there a lot. But they're slowing their line changes down. The boys seem to be getting tired. Yeah, you can see that the face-offs aren't happening as quick. The players were lined up a lot faster in the first couple periods, but that's to be expected. They've all worked very hard, and they've earned this. Oh, from the break, we're going straight down, foot race, Redman comes in, going in, shot, no stop, another stop, McClellan makes the big save, told you he was a great goaltender. And he that. just stands there like it was no big deal. Oh, he <laughs> is good. Offside call, what a move, and not wow. only did he make one stop, the kid made two. Two, yes, and his... His oh. captain has just come off the ice and said, way to go, buddy, you've kept us in. Let's have another look. He comes in, he's challenged the player, he's ready for the shot, fantastic save, stick the pad out, and then there was the rebound, and he got that too. The thing I liked about that, Annette, and we'll get back to it, because I want to get focused on the game right now, is Erickson has control of the puck. About 10 feet inside the zone, going in, it's dumped, they have to clear it for the offside, and they nullify it. Wake up, comes up. Lobs it inside the zone, going right back out of the net. Hart takes it behind the net and stops that smart, nice play. Ostrovsky, straight up, cross. Over to Redmond. Redmond, once again, another man logging lots of ice. Coming in, oh, Erickson hammers him. We have a delayed penalty call going against the Ice Hawks. Oh, penalty. They're going on the power play, and Erickson is just livid. He's not happy at all. That looked like a pretty clean hit. I'd, I'd have to see a replay. He says The official says the stick was high. And Erickson, you're right, he's not happy stick. about it. Said it was high stick, but the key for this is I get back to the move that young Jason McClellan made and the stop that he made. The thing I liked about him was how he stands up and how agile and such a good skater he is skating backwards. And when he was skating back in, he put his left leg out to extend it to stop the shot. Beautiful, beautiful, a well Very played. Very smart goaltending. Oh, I like Jason, he is a good goalie. I mean, as we mentioned, Thiessen's playing well, and so is Brandon Hart. I haven't seen Matt, but I know Matt's a good goalie as well. Coming up, all the way up the center, straight down. Who's going to get it? Oh, tough, tough break. Gold couldn't pick that one up. Far side, Houston takes his man off the puck. Kyle Ross has control of the puck for the Ice Hawks. Coming down, they're shorthanded. Ross goes to the left side. Ross is hauled down. Penalty coming up to the Delta Flyers. Get possession, we blow the whistle. Three minutes left. Oh. You don't usually see penalties in overtime, but he's calling them. He's been consistently calling penalties all game. Watch this. Ross is hauled down there. Was it a haul? Was it a dive? A bit of a holding, a bit of a dive. I kind of got to say it was both, but I, I truly didn't see if Erickson's high stick was a high stick either, so. All right. Now, now three on three. three. Three on three, Morishita's gonna take the draw. Houston's going off, Mazur's coming out. Flyers are saying it's a late line change. Jeff no, Ford right. said it's not. Two yeah, minutes for holding. I thought it was a late line change. 159. Back pass. That's an Orban for a holding. Rogers give that one straight out to R.J. Horn. R.J. Horn comes down across the line. He's got Rogers in front of the net. R.J. Horn lost the puck, back out to Rogers. Rogers looks, Molnar's wide open. Back pass would have been Golden Mollar in that place. Mazer dumps it behind the net over to Dolter. Into Mazer. Dolter takes Mazer. Oh, pardon me. That is not Mazer. Who am I talking about? That is your buddy Molna. <laughs> I'll get him right. 
across the line. Morishita in control, goes in, takes the low, long shot. Morishita stopped that shot. This chip shot off the boards, out. Gillies dumps that one back in the corner. Morishita, Mazer going off on a line change, gets some fresh legs out. They need it, because these boys are getting tired. Close it all, boys. Long shot going in the corner. Pick back up. Gillies has the puck. Shot all the way out to center ice. Houston for the ice outs. Comes down. There's Houston and Ross. Houston. Long shot. Stopped by Hart. Steers that one in the corner. Houston goes after the rebound. Stopped in front of that. Oh, couldn't pick the rebound now. Turn it over and keep on going. Comes back. Cuts to the inside. Play off the puck. Chang had a great chance. Ross. Across the line, Houston's with him. Ross is taken off the puck by Redmond in the corner. Shot off the boards, all the way out the center ice. Hunt goes after that. 1.35 left in this first overtime period. 5-5. Minor penalty to Erickson has expired. Short-handed minor to the Flyers is in process right now. Oh, beautiful move by Erickson to get away from his man. Over to Fortuna, Fortuna's taking off the puck. Erickson going on the doorstep. Fortuna trying to get control of it. Erickson again takes his man off the puck. He's all over the ice. He's like a D9 count out there. <laughs> Houston has it. Straight up to Hunt. Hunt stops. Fortuna going on the front of the net. Houston gets the puck, cuts into the slot, takes the shot. That's blocked in front, deflected in the corner by Ostrowski. Out in the neutral ice area. Nice cross-ice passing play. Straight up, and Orban's called for two lines. They're called for an offside or a two-line pass. Well, both teams have killed the penalties. Both teams have had eight opportunities on the power play. The Hawks are three for eight. The Flyers are two for eight. At the beginning of the game, the specialty teams were a big part of this game, and that really seems to have petered off a little bit. Okay, taking the draw, center. We got Ross Sheard and Morishita. Ross Sheard won the draw, goes over in front of his bench to pick that one up. He's got Molnar with him. Inside the zone, Waycott stopped, turned. Beautiful move. Morishita has control of the puck. Waycott was driving for the net. Morishita couldn't get it to him. Dolter shot oh. that. Wow, that was a beautiful catch. Yeah, that was a nice catch. You know, if, that, if that had have gone in and net, I was watching the linesman, if that had have gone in, chances are it would have been disallowed because the linesman had a delayed offside on, and if not that it was a shot on goal, which it was anyway, but the arm was still up when the goaltender grabbed the puck. They had to clear the zone to get back on side. In that case, it would have been waved off and Faceoff would have come back Face up. Faceoff outside. All right, from the draw, we have Ross taking the draw for the Ice Hawks. Ross won the draw. Back up to Morishita, over to Mazur. Ross the scores! The Ice Hawks win the game! 26 Six seconds. To five. 26 seconds left in the overtime. The Ice Hawks deflate the bubble for the North Delta Flyers. Well, you have to give both teams a ton of credit. They played an incredible hockey game back and forth the whole night. Wow. If you were not entertained here, you were not entertained. This is going to be an exceptional series. While we talk and that, we talked about a split. They've got a split. The final score, the Ice Hawks win by a score of six to five in overtime with 26 seconds left. And I was just gonna overtime. comment how I thought the boys would really use this break well when they were gonna have it and come out for the next overtime and the goal managed to go in. It was a great goal. Hart didn't really have much of a chance. It trickled into the corner. He couldn't get his pad out far enough, but uh, we're gonna have a look at the replay here and just uh, see if we can see it. Okay, watch in front. Mazur Very patient. Has I think it got deflected. It looked actually from our point of view that it was deflected off Kyle Ross. Here we are, stick. we're gonna have another look. I thought it was deflected. Ross's stick. Oh, that's really hard to tell. It's hard to tell from our angle. I'm not sure. We'll see how the referee calls it and what he told us and whether or not he felt it was deflected or not. I'm not too sure as to whether it was or it wasn't. But uh, boy, oh boy, what a hard-fought game. Oh, yeah. The, the shots, again, in the, in the overtime were tied at two shots each team, or two saves, I guess I should be saying. Okay. Um, I think all in all that the the uh, Ice Hawks definitely outshot the Flyers, but they came back and made it a game, and, and what an incredible game it was. If you were going to pick a game star for that game, who would you like to pick? 
putting oh you on my. the spot. You know, I, I always pick goalies, so no, I'm just going to have to stay with, uh, stay true to pattern. And, and I'd have to say McClenahan came up big when he needed to, coming in late in the game and making the stops and getting his team back into the game. Not only are you looking at a player that played well, but you're looking at the way he managed to get the morale going on his team. And that makes a big difference. Okay, who would you pick for the uh, Delta Flyers? I thought that, uh, again, the goaltender had a good, strong game, but I thought Molnar had a really strong game. He um, he was always out there. I don't know how many minutes he logged tonight, but he was out there constantly. So. Well, I know uh, Molnar had a good game. I was impressed with the play of Birch. I thought Birch had a good game. And uh, the one young man that I hope he's really doing fine right now is Ben Forehand after he took that... Uh, just pounding in the first period when he got hammered on that check. Yeah, we didn't see him come back, which is unfortunate, but hopefully he'll be able to just uh, maybe ice the in injury and come back. All right, we see a series like this, and that it's a seven-game series. They're in the each other's barn. They split in the first rink down here. They go in. The Flyers, they've got to be happy at least coming out of it with a split, considering the fact that the Delta Ice Hawks were at the end of the season 13 points ahead of the North Delta Flyers. Yeah, and the fact to get the win in the first game, I think that meant so much to them. They would have loved to walk out of here with a win tonight, and they certainly fought for it. You can't say they didn't try hard. Wow. It wasn't a blowout. It wasn't a high score. It was a high scoring <laughs> game, but it wasn't a blowout like we said. And and I think that uh, all credit goes to both teams, but the Flyers certainly gave it their all to walk out of here up two to, two to nothing. I give a lot of credit as well, not only to the, uh, you know, the players on the ice that play, but I give a lot of credit to the coaching staff, the way they've got these boys playing. I mean, you know, we watched them in the overtime. I don't blame the boys for slowing down and being a little bit tired because it was a really hard fought long game and I think too talking about the coaching staff and the discipline that they give to their players because we saw a real nasty hit in the first period uh, player didn't come back in most junior hockey games yes. that I've seen in the past you would see the players come out and really go after uh, hunt because of the hit that he made they settled down they concentrated on the game concentrated on getting goals and stayed out of the penalty box and if they had to go in the penalty box they were usually taking somebody with them it was a so fair amount of it penalties was really too. good there was a fair amount of penalties a lot for, of penalties playoff hockey um, especially in the overtime you don't usually see penalties in the overtime but I, I do think that the officials did a good job they stayed on top of it and it's nice to see that if he's going to start calling it at the beginning of the game that he stayed consistent throughout the game he didn't call it call it call it and then let it go yeah it so didn't he did he did be consistent the lines did an excellent job and I thought overall it was a very exciting game. Okay let's take one more look at that goal and we'll see whether or not we can see it uh, as far as a deflection or not from the draw. Okay you can see Kyle Ross wins the draw a bit of a turnaround. Mazur takes the shot and Ross moved to the front of the net. Now Ross was the centerman that took the initial draw. It didn't of that. look like it touched his stick but it's it's really hard to tell from our angle. We're going to have to get more cameras in here. <laughs> <laughs> We've got enough of them around here uh, as it is. But, uh, you know, it was a really a well-played game. We hope everybody at home uh, enjoyed it because I know we were really entertained. Pretty good crowd on hand. Not a sellout crowd, but a uh, pretty good crowd on hand to watch this. Game two of the best of seven. Speculation. What's it going to go? Five, six, or seven? The what, from what we saw tonight, I didn't have the luxury of seeing game one. From what we saw tonight, I say we're going to go all seven games, and it's going to be a hard battle right to the bitter end. I, I really see a lot of these games going into overtime because these teams appear to be so evenly matched, even though the standings did not show that at the beginning. Well, but I really think that we're going to go all the way. If you want to see what the players are doing following the game, look behind me down the <laughs> runway here. This is what they're doing. They're jogging after the game. They're getting themselves in shape right now for the next game. Lord knows they're not tired enough. Anyway, we enjoy doing it. On behalf of everyone at Delta Cable Television, myself, Annette Labus. hope you've enjoyed this broadcast. Go on out, check it out on the website. It's www.pijhl.com, or you can click on the BC Amateurs website, which is www.bcaha.org or org. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the telecast. Five. Final score was six to five in favor of the Delta Ice Sox in overtime. First overtime. Thanks for watching. If you don't play sport, at least be one. <laughs>